Howdy, howdy! Uh, my name is Garrick, and today we are sampling Pericles, the Peloponnesian War by Mark Herman and GMT Games, the uh, second game in the Great Statesman series, as I recall. Uh, joining me are Mango. Hello there. Drew. Hello. And Badger. Hello. Badger is our sage guru who has actually played this game and is going to guide us through its uh, billion pieces, as Drew said. So, <laughs> Badger, if you want to go ahead and just take it away, uh, however it makes sense to you. All right. Um, as Garrick noted, this is Pericles from GMT Games, uh, designed by Mark Herman, released about four or five years ago. Um, its subject matter is the conflict for supremacy in ancient Greece between Athens and its empire and Sparta and its allies slash empire. <laughs> um, the time frame of the game is about 460 BC to around 400 BC. Uh, it follows in the aftermath of the Greeks led by Sparta and Athens successfully defending Greece from the Persian invasions. Um, they chased the Persians out. Sparta kind of got tired of that and went home. Athens continued on uh, forming an alliance with the Greek city-states in the Aegean and in Asia Minor, Ionia, um, and kept fighting the Persians. This alliance um, gradually transformed itself into an Athenian empire where Athens was the big dog and no one else could really do much about it. Uh, this made Sparta nervous. They got together with Corinth and Thebes um, to sort of protect themselves against Athens' power. This created a balance of power situation, which as students of history, we know always works out the best for everyone. Um, in 431 BC, Sparta and Athens uh, went to war after many years of lower level conflicts and crises. And that war is the war that we now know as the Peloponnesian War, which ended in 401 BC with Athens being the loser. Sparta was sort of the winner, but it didn't last long. Um, the, full, uh, per the, the full Pericles experience is a 10 turn campaign game that covers the entire 60 year span of history that I just mentioned. Tonight, we're going to play a two turn scenario, um, which simulates the start of the Peloponnesian War in 431. Uh, this is a four player game. Two players will play on each side. So two on Athens, two on Sparta. But each player in each city represents one of two rival political factions. In Athens, we have the aristocrats and the demagogues. In Sparta, we have the, I think it's a soft G, Agiad kings and Europontid kings. So there are four players on two sides, but only one faction will win the game. Um, victory is a function of honor, and honor is the measure of victory points in the game. Uh, each faction's honor will be tracked along this edge track. Um, everyone starts with 10 honor at the start of the game. You can lose honor, but you can never go below zero. Uh, the top of the track is open-ended. If anyone ever gets to 100 honor, they're probably winning anyway. Um, so each faction is concerned with their own honor. They want to be ahead of everyone else if possible. But both sides are also interested in the sum total of their faction's honors. So each city right now is sitting at 20. The winner of the game will be the faction in the city that wins the war. If you are on, if Sparta loses and you're a Spartan faction, you cannot win. So your city must win the war. And then you want to be ahead of your domestic political rival in terms of honor. So how do you gain honor? Um, there are 
basically uh, it's basically a two part equation. The first way you can gain honor is to win domestic political battles at home on this side of the map. Second way to gain honor is to do well fighting the war, winning military victories and uh, diplomatic victories in the various theaters of war on the map. And it's always better to be the faction that was in charge of a given operation because you can take credit for doing good things and you will get more honor than your uh, compatriot in your city. Um, if you're not doing things well in the map, you will lose honor and your city will fall behind the other city. Um, so, as I said, usually the side that is ahead in total honor, if Athens is ahead of Sparta, for example, uh, that side is usually going to have the winning faction. That's not always the case in a longer game, so it's not um, relevant to what we're doing tonight. But in the longer game, there are uh, there are ways in which uh, you can win an automatic victory, even if you are trailing in total honor as a city. Um, So that's the, that's the broadest possible overview of the game. You're trying to get honor, victory points, and win. Um, I'll do a little closer overview of the game now. We're talking about broadly about the systems. Um, and then we'll go into the sequence of play a little bit more in depth. Um, and after we do that, we can do sort of a rolling rolling teach of some of the finer points on turn one. And if I've done my job, turn one will still be a competitive turn and turn two should be able to sort of stand on its own two feet and we can have a fight to the finish to see who wins the two turn scenario. Um, so, uh, Pericles has played in turns but it's not played in player turns. Um, so there's not really any downtime for anyone. Everybody will be engaged throughout the turn um, doing various things. The, the turn proceeds according to a set sequence of play, uh, but the order in which things happen in a given step is not always set. Um, so, you kind of have to be paying attention to what's going on so that you're always engaged with the game. The, the uh, a turn is basically divided into three main parts. There is a political phase. A, uh, this sequence of play calls it a theater phase. I like to call it the military phase. And following that, there is an end phase, which sounds like it might just be a cleanup step, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Part of the end phase is redeployment, which is is or can be critical to how the next turn of the game plays out. Um, I will at times in this teach use non-standard, non-rulebook terminology, um, just because some of the rulebook terminology is a little jargony at times, and I want to. I want to get away from the jargon and just focus on the game. So if I say something that doesn't line up with what's in the rule book, I'm not trying to sneak anything in. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> trying to make it, I'm just trying to make it more uh, intelligible. Um, and uh, there are certain readings of the rules that you might not get right away from the rule book. So you have to uh, check the errata and the clarifications at board game geek, especially. And I'm relying on, I'm relying on those for the teach. If I screw anything up, it's not anybody's fault but mine, uh, but I, I don't think I'm gonna screw anything up. So um, with that said, the political phase. Political phase is about the internal political and strategic debates within each city um, regarding a set of issues that the players will choose each turn. These are the issues. Um, and these issues will be debated on the debate tracks in each city. Um, each city will conduct separate rounds of debate. There are six rounds of debate in each political phase. And the object of those debates is to 
take an issue that is on the agenda and win it for your side. At the end of the six rounds, um, the debates will determine uh, a number of things. The first thing that will be determined is the number and type of actions that your faction and your side will be able to take on the map in the following military phase. The other thing that will happen in the debates is each faction will gain a certain number of strategos. These are basically the resources that you use to uh, pay for and power your activities over here on the map. The third thing that will happen is um, we'll determine which side gets to actually command or make decisions regarding the actions that take place over here. For example, if the aristocrats win a military issue, they will be able to command the military action that takes place on the map um, in the military phase, one, one instance of it at least. Um, so the political phase uh, serves to set up what happens in the military phase. But it is also important in its own right, because this is essentially the win political battles at home part of the honor equation I mentioned earlier. Um, you can win honor for basically, you know, quote, winning the debate at home. You, you want your side to look, look the best to your citizens in Athens or to the elites in Sparta. Um, the title of controlling faction in each city is also at stake. Being the controlling faction is important uh, for a number of reasons. First, you get to make a number of decisions for your side um, regarding things that happen on the map. Um, it's also important because when you're in charge, if things go, go wrong, um, you might be penalized and lose honor. So. Um, it's good to be the controlling faction, and sometimes it's not good to be the controlling faction. The controlling faction also gets uh, some advantages in setting the agenda for the debates in your city. So it's that's just one of the things that, that gets decided in the political phase. Um, generally speaking, um, in the political phase, Gains and losses of honor are going to be a zero-sum affair. If the aristocrats gain honor in the debates in Athens, it will come at the expense of the demagogues. So the aristocrats might move up and the demagogues move down, but this marker usually won't move. Same thing in Athens. So what happens internally isn't going to change the standing of Athens relative to Sparta or vice versa, for the most part. Um, so you're really sort of fighting over the distribution of the city's honor between the two political parties when you're doing political phase. Um, so is it like generally true that the city's honor is just the sum of the two factions? Yes, honor, that's all that... That's all that it is. Yep. Okay, when, very interesting. When, cool. uh, when, when the... Uh, when the aristocrats gain honor on the map, the city will move up also. Um, when the aristocrats lose, the city will move down. So yeah, these, these should always add up to this. Very um, cool. So yeah, the political phase is important in itself, but it also sets up the action for the military phase. In the military phase, the conflict between the two cities uh, moves over to the map. Um, there are bases, armies, navies, and treachery markers that are in play on the map. Also, um, the strategos that you win in the political phase will be used uh, on the map for various actions as well. Um, they're primarily a currency to pay for actions, right? Basically, they're a currency to pay for actions, but they do have their own military value. So, Got it. Um, so 
you place them over here just as a, you know, just so you remember to count them when you're fighting or doing other things. Um, also, time for a small nerd moment. Uh, Stratagos is the singular. The plural is Stratagoi. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Just so we can be technically you correct. You are correct. On Ooh, stream. Yeah. The chat already called us out, so. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't speak much Greek. As in, that's okay. As in, not much being zero. It's all so, Greek. It, us. Ah, you you said it before I could. Dang it, yeah, Drew. <laughs> I, I wasn't going there. Um, well done. I will stoop to any lows. In the military phase. Anything for a part, pun. <laughs> in the first part of the first part of the military phase, the players will take turns placing these action shits on the map, and they will be placed face down. So. Nobody really knows what any action shit is. Each one of these action chits will correspond to a an issue that was won in the just finished political phase. So, for example, I don't even know what I I don't even know what I grabbed here. This is the Oracle issue, and it is owned by the demagogue faction DF. So, if the demagogues win the Oracle issue in the debates. They will get this action shit to place on the map when we're placing things on the map. So those will be placed one by one in in a given order. Um, once they're all placed, we resolve all of these actions by once again in order, in a set order, um, flipping them over one at a time and resolving an action. When that action is resolved, we flip over another one and resolve that action until all the actions are done. Um, so those actions might be fighting battles to try to kill enemy units. You can raid to attack. They won't be here anymore, but uh, attack your opponent's supply of strategos. You can build new bases. You can upgrade your bases. You can use treachery to try to get the get your friends in get Sparta's friends in the Pactus to shift this base over to Spartan control. Um, all the different things that you can do to try to win the war and make life miserable for your opponent. And of course, while you're doing that, your opponent will be doing it to you. Um, if you're successful in fighting battles or building bases or flipping bases, uh, you will gain honor. And as opposed to what usually happens in the, polit in the political phase, the standing of Athens and Sparta will absolutely change relative to one another in the military phase. So if you're doing well and winning the war, you will move up. And if you're not, you will move down. Um, <sighs> this seems like a good time to go over the components um, on the map. The map itself is divided into these rectangles. Uh, called theaters. There are two kinds of theaters. The ones with brown boxes, like Sparta or the Isthmus of Corinth, are land theaters. The theaters with a blue box are naval theaters. Um, despite the names, and as you can see already, any kind of unit, armies, navies, bases, can, invest, can exist in every theater with the exception of Persia. Persia is off limits. Um, there are three Persian bases that the Spartans can build under the right circumstances and they can go in Persia, but otherwise Persia is off limits and out of play. Um, it's, off, it's always off limits to armies and navies. Um, and until such time as building is allowed there, uh, you, nothing happens in Persia. Um, not relevant to our scenario, but relevant to the longer game. Uh, there are granaries. These are very important in the longer game because Athens could not historically feed its population. They needed to import grain to feed their population. In the longer game, if Athens starts a turn without a base in a granary, they must establish a base in a granary by the end of the turn or they surrender and Sparta wins the war and whichever Spartan faction is ahead will win the game. Um, 
that's not on the table for this scenario, but it's a good general point. Um, emanating from the theaters are connections. As you might guess, these are movement routes. There are four different types of connections, which seems like a lot, but it's not really that important. Um, basically, navies can use three of them. The only one they can't use is the land-only connection. And armies can use three of them. The only one they can't use is a navy-only connection. Um, the type of connection does matter, though, for movement purposes and how movement works, but I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, the theaters themselves uh, can at any given time be classified one of three ways. A theater can be controlled. Um, if only one side has pieces in it. For example, Athens is controlled by Athens. Sparta is controlled by Sparta. Um, Chios is also controlled by Athens because Athens uses the white pieces as well. Those are the Athenian allies. Um, so the theater can be controlled. It can also be, from one point of view or the other, be called friendly controlled. If you're Athens, this is friendly controlled, and Sparta would be enemy controlled. Um, a theater is neutral if it contains units from neither side. So in our scenario, only Macedonia, way up here, is neutral. If a theater controls units from both sides, it is contested. Chalcedice and Boeotia are contested. Uh, I think those are the only ones that are contested. Um, the status of a theater is important mostly because when you do actions in the military phase, the type of action that can occur and sometimes the mechanics of what occurs themselves are based on the status of the theater at the time the action is at the time the action is resolved. So for example, if there is a military action that takes place in a contested theater, the military action works differently there than if it is if it is resolved in a friendly controlled theater or a neutral theater. Um, the pieces themselves, let's see. Athens obviously is blue. The Athenian Empire slash allies, the Delian League, has white pieces. The Athenians control them just as if they were Athenian pieces. Um, Athens also has access to the armies of Argos. Argos was a fairly major city state in Greece. Um, but they mostly sat out the war. They were, they were careful about their neutrality and they were located really close to Sparta. So they had to be careful. Um, Athens can build an Argos unit if they ever build a base in Sparta. So I don't know if we'll see that tonight or not, but the guys from Argos can only ever be controlled by Athens. Um, Athens has a special unit, the Athenian state ship, which is located in Athens right now. It's a it's a state ship, but it's not a navy. It's a it's a special one use stratego. We'll get into how those are used later. Um, the Spartan pieces obviously are red. Their allied units are yellow. They can use the yellow ones just like they can use the red ones. Um, the Spartans have access to three Persian bases, and it only ever will be the Spartans that can build them, and only in Persia. Um, the Spartans also have a special unit, which is the 300. Uh, the 300 is a regular Spartan army unit for just about all purposes, but it also counts as a stratego, which means that it's a little stronger than a regular army unit, and it means that it's self-activating. Uh, uh, let's see. When I, when I talk about the pieces, I will try in the teach to be specific in terminology so as not to confuse people. Um, if, I, if I say pieces, I mean the little figurines, the uh, armies, navies, and bases, basically. 
If I say units, I mean armies or navies, the things that can move. Um, if I say bases, I just mean a base. Uh, if I say a city-state unit, that's either a red or a blue. If I say a league unit, that's or a league base, that's yellow or white, or I guess brown also. Um, if I say friendly, I mean, from smartest point of view, friendly would be this or this, or even Persian, I guess. And from Athens' point of view, friendly would be this or this, or brown. Um, the TTS version of the game uses little figurines. The physical copy of the game uses wooden blocks and wooden sticks. There is, uh, I'll mention this just because there's some, some relevance to the map. The, uh, you can see here that there are little, little blocks. That's an army notation. This is a Navy notation. I don't know if there's any disc notation, but the bases in the game are little wooden discs. Uh, the 300 is Gerard Butler, of course. But on the charts up here, it shows a little red meeple. That's also the 300. In the game, it's a little red meeple. Alcibiades is a little black meeple in the game, and here he's just the bust of Alcibiades. Um, oh, treachery. We have some treachery markers already on the map. Um, each side has a bag of treachery markers, 10. That's a, a component limit. Uh, treachery is used to try to get cities to flip to your side. Treachery is also important in its own right. It has its own military strength and whatnot. You're stirring up the stirring up the opposition in the countryside and within the city and whatnot. So treachery is important. Um, there is a there is a component limit of ten on treachery markers, just as there is a component limit on all the rest of the components. That, we have what we have on the board to start, but then up in the different bags, um, you can build new units, new bases, um, but you, you're constrained by the component limits. Um, treachery markers, I should note, you have a component limit, but you also have to be careful with them a little bit. Now, this might not be the time for it, but since I started, treachery markers once placed, um, don't move around. They sort of stay there until they're forced to be removed. And there's a few separate ways that they, they can be moved. And I'll get to that when I get there. Um, there's no limit during the military phase to how many pieces you can cram into a given, into a given theater. When we do redeployment in the end phase, there's a stacking limit. The only and most important exception to all this is bases. There is a hard limit at all times of three bases in any theater, any given theater. Um, Necessary of anybody's bases? Anybody's bases. So if, if uh, Athens builds a base in Corinth, a white base, a league base, nobody else can build any bases in Corinth until one of them dies, until one of them dies. Uh, you could try to flip one to your side or whatnot, but once there's three bases in a theater, it's full. Um, just as a spoiler, uh, bases are really super important in the game for reasons that will become apparent as, as the teach progresses. Basically, bases pay for your units. Bases are where you can build your units. Bases have their own military strength. Bases... As a result of that military strength, prevent can help prevent other units from moving. They're just bases are really important. You could almost say that the game is about the bases. But, um, so that's the components. We're, we place the chits in the end phase. We or in the in the military phase, we resolve resolve all of them. Then we go to the end phase. In the end phase, uh, in longer scenarios, there's a victory check. Um, and possibly uh, some victory point honor slash honor adjustments that are done. And then you see if somebody won. In our case, we're going to play the full two turns. There's no automatic victory conditions in this. 
scenario. Um, the next step then is to determine if uh, your side can pay for all the units it has on the board. Um, these little markers down here along the track um, are tracking how many units can be supported and how many units are actually on the map at a given time. Um, if you just track those as you're building them or killing them off, it makes your life easier in the end phase. So that should be a trivial, trivial calculation. If you've got too many units in the end phase, you have to get rid of units until you're back under your limit. Um, the most important part of end phase after maintenance is redeployment. In redeployment, you can move units and not only can, you must in most circumstances, move units back to base, bases. So once again, bases are really important. The thing that makes redeployment very important is you are not constrained by the movement rules for units in redeploying. So something that becomes obvious right away in this game is that Sparta can't get anything to move over here because Athens Navy is preventing it. If Sparta gets a base somewhere over here, they can move stuff to that base and sort of break the blockade, if you will. So bases are super important for redeployment. Um, after redeployment, there are a couple little housekeeping things and then you start the next turn. So I wanted that to be quicker than it was, but that's the that's the higher level overview of how a turn works in Pericles. Um, I'll get deeper into the political phase now, but I'll take a break here if anybody has any questions about all of that rambling. Um, or if not, just I mean, say, I'm nope. sure I, I'm sure I should have a million questions. I just can't think. Of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, no, and the, I mean that's just a really broad. That's that's a really broad overview. Basically, you're you're going to do stuff over here to set up the things that you're going to do over here. You're going to do a bunch of stuff over here, and then we do it all over again. Um, Uh, okay, back to the political phase, start of the turn. Um, there'll be some minor housekeeping at the start of every political phase, basically getting the strategos back in order, um, making sure all the issues are in place, whatnot. And then the turn proper starts. First thing that's done every turn is we draw an event card from the Aristophanes deck. Um, Every event basically has two things happen. First, an event, first, uh, one issue will be seated on the debate track for each city. This issue, or this card here, is the set first event for this scenario. So it says to place on the opposition factions one space, the war and peace issue, which I've already done. The second thing that happens on every event card is a some it's I don't want to call them random event because there there's a set number of things, but uh, there's another event that happens, and these range in severity from minor to giant pain in the butt. Um, in our case, we've removed. I already removed those six. I've got them up here. So, um, but you're saying it's always a pain. It's just whether it's it, a minor. It's pain always or... a pain. It's just a matter of well. It's, sometimes it's not necessarily even a pain. It might be for one and not the other. But um, for example, this card that I've got out here is another example of an event card. This one shows a will of the assembly event. Um, when you get a will of the assembly event, uh, that sort of ends up potentially driving the action for the turn. Um, sometimes for good and sometimes not for good. So there are, I think there are 24, 24 of these. That sounds right. Yeah. And there's three versions of each card. They're all based on a play by Aristophanes. Um, so we can, I'll go over that a little bit more in the rolling teach on turn one. Uh, the next thing that happens is 
Every faction will assemble a card, uh, a hand of cards. You will get a hand of seven cards. You will have six cards that will be from your city's shared deck of cards. There's one deck for Athens, one deck for Sparta. And to that, you will add your leader card. Each faction has a leader card. Uh, in this scenario, Sparta, both Spartan factions, um, both Spartan factions have a one set card that will be in their hand for sure. The Athenians don't have any set cards. Um, so you will get you will get a certain number of draws from your shared deck. From there, you will assemble a hand of cards. Um, the remainder of the cards in the city decks are used then in the coming military phase sort of as dice. But you know, there's a set, you know, there's a set number of fives, set number of fours, and whatnot. So it's dice, but it's not dice. Um, once everyone has created their hand, the factions will take turns picking issues that will be placed on their city's debate track. Um, this is basically like picking a legislative agenda for your city. Um, and both sides get to pick certain issues and they take turns doing so. This controlling faction gets a little bit of an advantage in, in doing this. Um, and I'll cover this a little more in depth in the rolling teach because we can, we can do that there. Um, as I noted, then these issues will be the subject of debates in each city. The objective in those debates is to move the issues to your side of the track. Um, if you have an issue moved to your side of the track and you keep it there at the until the end of the six rounds of debate, then your faction has won that issue. Every issue that is won by one faction or another will be turned into, well, not everyone, but the ones that belong in the theaters will be turned into these action chits at the end of the round. Any issues that go undecided that are remain here, nothing happens to them. They just go back. They go back in the hopper for the next turn. Um, both cities have their own set of issues. Uh, they are identical except for uh, two unique issues for each city. Um, I won't say much about those right now, except for to say that basically these are, the, the sets of issues are identical. They're identical in, in number and their effect. The only ones that are different are the two unique issues from each city. There are two general sorts of issues. There are political issues, which are the issues that run across the top of each event pool from war and peace over to ostracism. Those are political issues. Then there are theater issues, which are resolved on the map in the military phase. So uh, diplomacy, the league issue, and the military issue. Uh, there are multiple instances of each of those. There's also an oracle issue. There's only one instance of that in each city that's also uh, resolved over on the map. Um, the issues of war and peace and ostracism are sort of the major political issues. I'll get into them a little bit later. Uh, the games issue is a political issue that's resolved before we go over to the map. Uh, if the cities are at peace and you win the games issue, you can get three honor uh, for your faction, just like that. And so if you get three honor for your faction, it will also help your city. So this is one way that your city can uh, advance relative to the other in the political phase. But if you win games and somebody in the other city sees that you've got games on, they may do games also. And so you, you may or may not gain any ground doing the games issue. If the cities are at war, the games issue allows you But you'd you still be right gaining, now. you'd still be gaining ground. Yeah, you'd be, you, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. It's good for the, it's good for whoever does it, but you may not gain relative to your enemy city. So, sure. Um, well, it's ancient Greece. We're all enemies here. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
if if Athens and Sparta are at war, then the city, then the, the games issue grabs you more strategos. More strategos for you is always good. Um, it's just always good. Uh, I won't say much about the citizenship, but Colony and Agogi and Cryptea right now. Um, the military, or the... The one thing I will say about the in these issues, the, the unique issues, is they are one-time use issues. Uh, so they may or may not even be relevant to our game. So you, you get one shot to use them. Uh, once you use them, they're gone. So at some point in the game, all you'll have is your run-of-the-mill stuff. Um, as I said, these, these issues are... Did I do lock those somehow? Um, the theater issues will be resolved over on the map. Um, there are multiple instances of each of these. Um, so it is possible, if you want, to debate all three league issues in a given, in a given assembly, or none at all. Um, it's up to the choices of, of the factions as to what they want to do. Um, military issues... Yeah, I'll go over these. I'll go over these now. Um, military actions are the mechanism by which you move and fight over on the map. Um, using a doing a military action is always going to cost you at least one stratego. Um, it can cost up to five for the person that's doing it. Um, military action enables you to build your city-state units if you do the action in your home in your home uh, theater. Um, if you do a military action in a place that is that contains the enemy, so if Athens, well, you wouldn't use this, you would use this. If Athens does a military action here, there will be a battle or a raid. If they do one here, there will be a battle or a raid. If they do one here, there won't be a battle or a raid because no one's there. The trick is when you place this here, there may not be anyone here, but as the turn progresses, Sparta may move someone in there and then all of a sudden you have a battle that you weren't necessarily counting on fighting. Um, let's do this again. If there is a military action here, you're not necessarily forced to do a battle. You can also do a raid. A raid, as I said before, attacks enemy strategos. That are held by a player, not in the in the. If you have it, I can attack this. If it's here, it's not a big deal, and Athens is happy that it's there because it's not being used against them. Um, so raids attack strategos. Battles try to attack and kill pieces. Um, whenever there is a battle, say there's a battle here. Uh, the commanding general, the person who is in charge of this issue, in this case it would be the demagogues, will pay a certain number of strategos, but everybody else will have a chance to uh, spend strategos if they so choose to either help in the case of your city-state compatriot or hinder the action if you're an enemy. Um, if, there, if there is a battle... As opposed to a raid, you will be able to move units prior to the battle. Um, if the issue is resolved someplace where there won't be a battle, like here, you can also move units uh, as part of the military action. Um, if there is a raid, you don't get to move things first. But we'll get into that more a little bit later. Um, so that's basically what the military issue, military action does. You can build city-state, you can fight, either battle or raid, and you can move stuff. The league issue for either side basically allows you to build league things. You can build... Uh, you can build allied armies, navies, and bases. It also allows you to upgrade a 
an allied base into a city-state base. For example, if Sparta wanted to, they could take this one and change it into a red base. Um, there are advantages in doing that, but as you'll note, since things are component limited, you have to choose wisely when doing something like that. Um, when you build at a base, when you build units, uh, building is always, it never costs any strategos, and a base can always build two armies or one navy. Navies are more expensive. Um, and you can build as many uh, times as you have bases in a theater. So, for example, um, if Sparta did a league issue in the Isthmus of Corinth, they could build two navies, or they could build one navy and two armies, or they could build four armies. Um, if you want to build a base, bases do cost strategos to build. It costs four to build a new league base. And it costs two to upgrade from this to a city state base. Uh, as a fallback position, you can also use the league issue to remove one enemy treachery marker if you don't have any building to do or whatnot, but you're generally going to use it for building. The diplomacy issue is where where treachery comes into play. The diplomacy issue can be used in three different ways, depending on where it's, um, where it's resolved. First, if it is resolved in a, if it is resolved in a theater like this, uh, you can use it to pay strategos to purchase treachery. Well, you can pay strategos to try to take over an enemy base. If you don't have enough strength to take over the enemy base, the strategos that you uh, bought will turn into treachery markers. And then if you do another diplomacy issue, uh, the strategos you spend will be added to the treachery that's already there. You try to take over the base. You can do a diplomacy action someplace where there isn't a base to take over just to place treachery there. Um, and treachery has its own strength, but the primary use of diplomacy in this context is to try to flip a base. Um, that said, you can also use a diplomacy to remove enemy treachery markers. So if Athens is using diplomacy to try to build treachery in there, Sparta could have its own diplomacy to get rid of Athenian treachery. That's one of the ways that treachery markers can be removed from the map. Uh, that's only if you control that theater or your side controls that theater, your city does, right? Um, I believe it's if it's if it's controlled or contested, you can remove. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's friendly controlled theater. Yeah, it's on the yeah, use the play aid. <laughs> the play aid is a good. I'm I'm going over these quickly. Um, use the play aid to get, uh, yeah, to get the full yeah. So if if Athens if Athens tries loading treachery into Sparta, Sparta can use uh, diplomacy in Sparta to get rid of those. If it's just in a contested theater, um, the treacheries will just keep adding up until someone wins. If you if you if you take a city. Using treachery, that's another way that the treachery markers go away. Basically, your guys won, so they go home. Your treachery markers go home. The third way to, to have treachery markers disappear is if Athens has a bunch of treachery in Boeotia and Athens loses this base, they lose all their treachery. Uh, uh, so let's see. We, so what is a neutral theater again? Uh, like where nobody is. Macedonia is the only one right now. OK. Um, yeah, if nobody's there, it's neutral. Um, so basically, basically, diplomatic issues are like uh, an aggressive use of diplomacy to attack your enemy. League issues are sort of a softer 
friendlier diplomacy to build things where you already have things. Uh, so if you have a unit, if you have a unit here, you can do a league issue there to build a base. If you don't have anything there, you can't do a league issue because it's got to be a friendly or a contested theater. Um, oh, that's what I didn't go around diplomacy. You can also use diplomacy in a neutral region like Macedonia to try to convince the Macedonians to come to your side and then you get a base. The problem with doing this is you have to spend strategos to do it and the enemy controlling faction can then respond with their own uh, payment of strategos to do it and then it gets difficult. You have to basically have double, the, the person that wants the base has to have double the strength of the defender to build a base. Um, so it's it's almost like a diplomatic battle in a, to a certain extent. You'll One side will pay strategos, the other side will pay strategos, you'll flip a card and, and if successful, you get a base. If not, you've just spent your strategos, but maybe that's good because you force the other guy to spend strategos as well. Um, so that's a very probably too quick run through of what the various issues are. So um, I didn't go over the military uh, mechanics yet because that needs its own whole separate explanation. So sort of halfway knowing what these things do now can inform your choices as to what issues you want to choose to place on the debate tray. Um, so knowing that and having selected them, most of them will be starting in the middle. You, there will be uh, six rounds of debate in each city. And the issues that are chosen to be debated are chosen alternately by each faction in each city. So in the first turn, the aristocrats, because they are the controlling faction, will get to choose one issue to debate. And the Europontids will get to choose one issue to debate. We'll debate that issue. And then the other side gets to choose an issue to debate. So each will get to choose three sides. The debate uh, debate works by playing a card from that hand of cards that we uh, that we built way back at the start of the turn. Uh, so use six of those, one one at a time in the six rounds, and the side that plays the higher the higher higher value card is going to move um, the issue to their side of the track, a number of spaces equal to the difference between the two cards. So let's say Athens plays a five. And, or the aristocrats play a five and the demagogues play a three, they would move, this would go to two. Um, so we'll do that six times and wherever the issues end up. Uh, and to be clear, you're allowed to put up for debate an issue that's on one of these spaces, right? Either these side are, of the track. Yeah, yep. these are yeah, all- I'll go over that more when we do the, the whole roll. Yep. Um, so, that's one thing that happens. The other thing that will happen when the cards are played is there is an opportunity to gain strategos from playing the card. Um, that's an independent, that's independent of whatever happens with an issue in a debate. You gain strategos based not on the value of the card that is played, but on whether the card is aligned to the issue in for debate. So, for example, if the Europontids played this card and they played it on a debate round where a league issue was at stake, they would gain one Stratego. If the other side played the card, both card, cards are both usable by both sides. If this card was played as a military issue by the, by the Agiads, they would gain three Stratego's. So regardless of whether you win the issue or not, um, you want to play a card most of the time that is going to gain you strategos. The other advantage of doing that is if you play a card that is aligned to an issue, for example, if you played this, the Europontids played this and they played it on a league issue, 
the value of the card would be six instead of four. So it's worth this card is worth four for any other issue. If you play it on a league issue, it's worth six. Hmm. Um, so there is there is some strategy in selecting your cards, obviously, then. Um, in a strategy game, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because you 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 want to maximize your egos, but you also want to gain control of issues. So a lot of times it's a lot a lot of times it works out. A lot of times it works out well because uh, you know you're getting the bonus and you're getting the strategos, but it doesn't always necessarily work out the way you want. It. Um. So. So every round you will hopefully move an issue to your side of the track and you will hopefully gain strategos. Um, so we'll do that six times. At the end of those six debates, you will have one card left in your hand. That single card left in your hand is used to um, pick up these strategos on the strategy board. There will always be five strategos on the strategy board. Uh, the sixth card in your hand is used to divvy these up. Um, I guess that's about all I have on how that works. Again, I'll go a little finer detail when we roll through turn one. Did you want to mention leaders well, and their uh yeah I'll, brain yeah, trust or whatever I'll, I'll do that i'll do that when we get when we get there to picking hands because the, there's more to picking hands too you don't get just six cards you get nine cards usually yeah um, um when the debate is complete all six rounds are complete we take a big picture view as to who won the debate not not just in terms of who won this issue and who won that issue, but big picture, who won the debate? This is important for three reasons, which I sort of touched on earlier. One, honor is at stake. Two, uh, the controlling faction button is at stake. And three, the favor of the assembly is at stake. Um, if you win the bait, the debate, Generally, you can gain up to three honor and your opponent can lose three honor or two and two, one and one, whatever it is. Um, the controlling faction button can change hands and this can change hands. I already went over that. Um, so who wins these? Well, the easiest way to win all three of them at once is to place the ostracism issue into the debate track. Um, if one side wins the ostracism issue, they win everything. They are the controlling faction. They win a full three points of honor. Their opponent loses the full three points of honor. And the favor of the assembly button, even if it's here, goes all the way to the other side. Um, so it's like a hot it's like the hottest of hot potatoes. <laughs> yes. This is the this is the hammer of the domestic political issues. So if you place ostracism on there, basically what you're saying is we're going to spend time fighting amongst ourselves and not spending time on issues that we will be using over here. But sometimes you need to do it to catch up to the other guy. So um yes, this is the hammer of domestic politics. If it's sometimes Aristophanes will put this out here and then you're screwed. Other times you just have to, if somebody wants to put it out there, you have to decide how much you want to fight about it. Um, I went over the controlling faction a little bit. Controlling faction is basically the head of the government. Uh, they get to make certain decisions. Um, favor the assembly. If you win the favor of the assembly and there's no ostracism, you move it one in your favor. If you win it again, you can't move it in your favor. You gain one honor and your opponent loses one honor. So this is sort of like a political momentum marker in a way. Uh, it just tracks who's winning. 
when ostracism is in effect, if if the aristocrats have the favor and they win ostracism, you don't get the bump because uh, they were already winning. They didn't have to be dicks and ostracize someone, so you don't get an extra. Bump. <laughs> um, basically, the ostracism, basically, the ostracism is sort of a reset of the entire political atmosphere in the in the city. Um, the controlling faction, once it's won, um, obviously stays there until the next debate round. Uh, yeah, and okay. there are times when it when it comes up being important. Um, so it is possible um, without if if ostracism is not in play that uh, you could do as much as an eight point swing in honor. If you win three in the debates and then you win another one with if you've already got the favor and that bumps, you, you know, you get three and three and one is four and they lose four. So that that can be a fairly substantial swing in any given round of debates. If the ostracism isn't played, uh, honor is one as follows. You total up the number of points that you have on the track. Um, let's say they won two issues and they won four issues. These issues altogether are worth four points because you have one four times one. These issues together are worth eight points. Um, so the aristocrats would win the oration honor. They have eight points worth of issues. They have four, the difference is four, um, so they would win three points because you win the difference in honor, but you can only ever win three. So it's not the number that counts, it's the quality of the arguments. Basically, you want to land a couple of sick burns on the other guy, and uh, <laughs> they're just droning along with their boring Pericles teach. Um, So that's how honor is divvied up. It is possible that, you know, if something happens like this, no honor changes hands. It's two, two um, but it's always capped at plus and minus three, just as with the ostracism. Is that just for that particular honor swing or is that for any, it's for all of them essentially? Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the big picture view of the whole six rounds of debate, yeah. So, um then in the next turn again it can be plus minus three. So um the controlling faction is determined by the side that wins the number of issues. So if this was again four, four and two, something like this, the demagogues would become the controlling faction. If it's tied, the tiebreaker is first, whoever currently holds the favor of assembly. Um next tiebreaker is does go to oration honor and if it's still tied then whoever is the controlling faction remains the controlling faction favor of assembly is also shifted based on whoever wins the most issues so in this case the demagogues win it if it's a tie it just doesn't move there's no political momentum in that case which do those tie. shifts first uh this shifts last first okay. you figure honor then you figure controlling faction, and then you okay. shift favor of assembly if needed. So whoever had the favor previously gets the tiebreaker if there's a tie or controlling faction. Um, this this goes last. This is middle. Honor is first. Um, Yeah, so then after we do all that stuff, uh, after we figure out the, the the big picture result of the debate, we do the strategy board thing. Um, and your last card will dictate how many strategos you get. Usually your leader card is going to get you the most strategos. Every other card will just get you one stratego. Um, but we can go over that in the in the a little more in the role and teach. Um, Let 
once the Stratigos from the strategy board are are doled out, uh, any political issues, which means war and peace, games, fees, uh, are then um, resolved. War and peace is the big one. At the start of our scenario, Sparta and Athens are at peace. Um, at any given time, the game will be in one of two states, war or peace. Um, and the war and peace issue is the one that changes that. It's relatively easy to change from peace to war. If any one faction wins the war issue when the game is at peace, the cities will go to war. So for example, we are going to start with war and peace on the debate tracks due to the event card. If, as long as one of these ends up on not in the middle, Athens and Sparta will go to war at the, and that will happen when the issue is resolved um, after the strategy board. To denote that you're at war, you change from a white token to a black token. That's that's the only, that's just the, that's the convention used in this game. Um, what's the difference between war and peace, you ask? Well, not as much as you might think. Um, the only thing that really changes is when Athens and Sparta are at peace, Athenian blue units can't go where there is a red piece and vice versa. Red things can't go where there is a blue thing. They can't move there. Um, otherwise, there can still be battles. You can still subvert enemy cities. League units can go wherever they want. So Athens could fight Corinth or Corinth could fight Corsaria or whatever. The only thing that really changes is Red can't move to blue and blue can't move to red. That might not seem like a big deal, but it can be because whoever gets the jump on moving someplace first, if Athens wanted to move guys into here, all of a sudden Sparta can't do anything. So that movement restriction ends up being intolerable for one side or the other, and that's why you end up going to war for the most part. Um, Changing from war to peace, which isn't going to happen in this game, is a little harder. Um, to go, if, if there is a war, to get peace, one faction on each side has to win the war and peace issue in the same turn. Uh, so basically, there has to be an agreement to go to peace. If that were to happen, sides that declare the peace both get an honor. So it's nice to. It's nice to be of the peace faction if you can pull it off. But of course, when both sides get 10, that means these are both moving 10. So the standing of the cities isn't changing. Just the people that pulled off the peace are changing. Um, if there is peace, all the red and blue guys have to go back home. They have to go to where there's a red or blue base. If there's a red and a blue base in the same place, they can coexist. They can even fight battles while they're at war but you can't load more guys in, or at least move more guys in. Athens, I guess, could build. Um, so that's the war issue. Then you would do a games issue, and if any of these was in play, you would resolve those. And that is the end of the political phase. Then you move on to the military phase. Um, as a first step, and you can say this is in the political phase too, any issues then that were won are turned into the action chits. So for example, this would turn into a demagogue military chit. This would turn into a, an aristocrat military chit. Um, if the Oracle issue was won, that would go to whichever side won it. Um, so each side will have a number of chits in their hand. If the number of chits between the factions on the same side is un more unequal than one, um, the side that has more has to give enough, 
the, the side that has less to sort of even up the even up the the draw. You will still own that issue. For example, if the um, if they had three and they had one, Athens would or the demog the aristocrats would have to give one to the demagogues, um, and the demagogues will place that issue, but it will still be owned and and commanded by the aristocrats. Before all that happens, though. Um, each side also has two rumor issues. They don't do anything when resolved, but they have a lot of uses. So, and um, which will become more apparent when you play. So, one of the things you can do with them is if there is an imbalance. One of the things you do is you give them one of your rumors, and now it's three and two, and that's okay. Um, the first thing that will happen in the military phase is honor order will be established. Whichever faction has the most honor will get the honor one marker. Whichever one has second will get the honor two marker, and so on. That will be the order uh, that things take place in the military phase. The order, honor order stays static um, throughout the military phase, um, even though this marker, these markers are going to be moving throughout the phase. It's just set at the start and that just is turn order for the, the military phase. That then, you know, next turn you determine it again to see goes first, second, third. In the military phase, everybody will have a certain number of chits that they're holding. And starting with the player with honor one, you can place any chit that you hold in your hand in any in-play theater, so not Persia, not the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, you place it face down. Then the next player places a chip. You also place it face down. The key here, though, is that if you want to play this in this theater, you place it on top of the stack. You create a stack of action chits. And that's true even if it's the other player or other team. Yep. Every, yes. So there will be one stack of action chits in a theater. When all the chits have been placed, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, just keep going around in a circle. The chits will be resolved. Say we had a very meager action phase and we had two stacks of chits. If the Athenian player is first, they can pick any, they can pick one chit to resolve from any stack of chits but the Athenian player can only choose blue chits. Spartan player can only choose Spartan chits. It doesn't matter if the aristocrats are choosing and they pick a chit that belongs to uh, the demagogues, the demagogues will just run that chit. But you have to pick a blue chit and then the Spartans have to pick a Spartan chit. Um, when the chit is picked, in this case, it would be rumors. Nothing would happen. You would move on to the next one. Then the Spartan would go and, oh, they have to pick this one. So you do this, you do the military action. Um, you do that. You keep doing that in turn order. If it were to happen that um, it gets to your turn and there are no chits that you can pick, for example, if the it's late in the turn and the stacks look like this, the Spartan players can't go until this chit is removed and finally exposes that to be eligible to be to be resolved. Um, and that's just how that's just how the action that's just how the military or the military phase and all the actions work. You just keep flipping them over and resolving them one at a time based on whatever uh, the action is that can be done. Um, I don't think I talked about the oracle before. The oracle is sort of special in that um, I 
Maybe one. Okay, for example, if this is a Spartan military issue that's being resolved here, the Spartan military issue is only being resolved in this theater. The Oracle issue, um, it doesn't matter where it's placed, just by the nature of what it, what it can do. Um, just because the Oracle issue is, is in Lesbos, you can use the Oracle issue in any any other theater so so you can place them towards like as a way to like clog yeah up it, somebody else it doesn't stuff? matter yeah it doesn't matter where it's placed but it matters where it's placed yeah yeah you can resolve it anywhere but you can use it to mess up you can use it to you know divert attention or to screw up a cue for somebody else or basically you can use it like a rumor but it's not a rumor um Um, yeah, so that's, that's how it works. So you just resolve everyone as they, as they come along. Um, and every time one is, is, uh, flipped over, the, the person that owns the chit gets to choose how to use it. That usually will involve spending some of their strategos. They can decide just not to use the shit if they don't want to. Uh, usually that costs nothing. Um, sometimes uh, you won't have the strategos to do what you want to use. So you just say, I'm not doing anything with it. Um, let's see. Uh, it's all starting to piece together. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you, so yeah, that that's how it works. You just keep, you just keep resolving these issues until you're done. At the end of the phase, if any given player has strategos left, you can turn those strategos back into your pool uh, for an honor gain, but you need to have four strategos traded in to gain one honor. So it's not, it's not an especially favorable uh, exchange rate, but if you, if you really want one honor, and you can save four strategos, you can trade it in to do that. Um, uh, do they otherwise roll over? To the otherwise, turn? nope. Otherwise, they're just, all the strategos go back at the end of every turn. Okay. So if, you, if you're stuck with three, you might as well use them somehow if you can, because um, you're just going to lose them. They're all use it or lose it. Um, let's see. So for some reason you end up with four at the end of your turn. There's no reason not. Yeah, to. if you yeah, or sometimes you can plan it that way. You know that you just be tight with your strategos and and you gain one, and sometimes that one is all you need. Um, it usually is not the case. There's usually better uses for them than saving them, but sometimes it just works out that way. Um, so I sort of went over the the issues. League is basically building league stuff. Diplomacy is either using treachery or removing treachery. Um, the military issue is the fancy pants centerpiece of the whole game. So uh, So we'll do the military issue now. Um, explain this. Let's say this issue is being resolved. Oh. The military issue is, as I said before, the way that you build city-state units. It's also the way you fight battles and move your units. Um, In order to build city-state units, the military issue has to be placed in your home theater. This is really the only way to build your city-state units. Um, you can't build them anywhere other than your home theater. Um, so for example, if this was Athenian and the Athenians place this here, even though there's an Athenian base here, you can't build blue stuff here. You can only build blue stuff in your home. Um, the second thing that allows you to do is move units. 
Um, you can, like I said before, you can move units in redeployment. That's not movement, that's redeployment, and that's a separate thing. The third thing that the military issue allows you to do is either battle or raid. And um, if the military issue is placed in a theater where there are enemy pieces, you will absolutely either have to battle or raid. Um, every time you uh, resolve military issue, you must have at least one stratego to spend. If you don't have, if for example, with this unit or with this issue, if the edgids are doing this one and they are out of strategos, the issue just vanishes. It just goes away. There's no action to be had. But as long as you have one, uh, you can do the issue. Um, I should note that if a, if the Spartans do a military issue in their home theater, in addition to building units in Sparta, if they have bases in Persia, they will also be able to build some additional units more than just um, what the Spartan bases allow. Um, uh, as I said before, talking about these builds, every time you build, a base can either build two armies or one navy. It doesn't matter if it's city-state units or these units. Um, Okay. The way that the military issue is resolved is dependent on the theater where it is resolved. If it is resolved in a home theater, you can build there. And that would be the first step of the military issue. If it is not in a home theater, it can either be. Um, if it's not in a home theater, there won't be any building. So let's say it was in the Isthmus of Corinth here. Because there are no enemy units, there will not be any battle or raiding. But you would be able to move units. If this issue was here, you would be able, you wouldn't be able to do any building because it's not home, but you would be able to either raid or battle. And if you choose to battle, you can first move units. So unless the unit, unless the uh, issue is in a home theater, the first decision that the commanding general, the owner of the chit has to make is whether there will be a raid or a battle in the military, uh, in the military issue theater. Um, if you choose to raid, Resolution is really simple. You pay three strategos from your own holdings. They go back to stock. You will take one battle card from your top of your deck and flip it over. In this case, it's a one. The enemy commanding faction would have to lose one stratego. Um, the raider gains three honor for raiding, regardless of how many Stratego losses they inflict. Um, and then the the action is done. That's it. That's the raid. That's the military issue when you do a raid. If the if the guy that's losing strategos can't afford to pay for all of them, for example, let's draw a better one here. Oh, much better. Um, if you lose, if it, if you have to lose two, you only have one left. You pay the difference in honor, so um, you can be run out of strategos and actually have to pay honor, actually lose honor as well due to a raid. So raids can be important because by running down the other guy's stratego stock, uh, you limit their ability to do other things, and it also gains you three easy honor without. Um, without endangering any of the units. Raids do not affect pieces at all. All they do is affect the enemy's strategic stack. Um, if instead of a raid, the Spartans wanted to battle here, uh, that's when things get more interesting. Um, if they announce that they want to do a battle, 
Um, every other player gets to decide how many strategos they want to commit to the battle. The issue owner, in this case, the adjids, is going to commit anywhere from one, which is the minimum that they had to spend on the on the action in the first place, up to five strategos. And you make that, you know, obviously you make that decision privately. Every other player can commit from zero to four strategos to help or hurt in the battle. Um, Everybody makes the decisions uh, simultaneously and and keeps them private, keeps the decision hidden. Um, once all those decisions are made, the two the two factions on the acting side uh, will flip their commitments over, and that is how many strategos the commanding general will be able to use in moving units uh, prior to the battle. The the Defenders don't. Um, the defenders don't reveal their their uh, commitments until right before the battle takes place. Um, okay. So once that decision is made, whether it's going to be a battle or a raid, and we decided that we're going to do a battle. These commitments are made, and let's say the Europontids are all in for five, and the or the Edgids are all in for five because it's theirs, and the Europontids decide, no, we're not helping out. The commanding general can move up to as many units as strategos are committed. So if five strategos were committed, they could make five separate moves. Um, I think I'm going to, instead of explaining movement first, I'm going to go right to the end and talk about how the battles are resolved, um, because I think that will help more with understanding what you want to do in terms of movement. Um, there are two types of battles. There can either, and the type of battle there are two types of battles. There's land battles and naval, naval battles. It's possible that in any given military action, there will be both a land and a naval battle, regardless of the type of theater. But the first battle that takes place is always dependent on the theater. So for example, with this issue placed here, uh, the battle, the first battle, in Boeotia will always be a land battle. The first battle in Athens would always be a naval battle. Um, the winner of the first battle, if there is a winner, sometimes there's a draw, the winner of the first battle can choose to fight the battle of the opposite type following the first battle. You know, provided you win that for, or, you know, as a second battle, provided you win the first battle. Do they also get to move again? Nope. There's no movement. You basically, you're going to move all your guys in, then you're going to fight the battles. If you fight a land battle and you win, then you can fight the naval battle if you so choose. Um, actually, fighting the, or actually resolving the battles is simple. It's basic, it's just um, addition. Um, okay. Let's say we're going to have a battle here. You add up four different things um, to. Okay. We're going to assume that there were five strategos committed to this battle. And I'm doing a great job with this. Um, the way each side's strength for a battle is determined is by adding up first the military value of 
pieces. To that, you add the number of strategos that were committed. And then you will add the value of the treachery markers. And finally, each side as part of the battle will flip one battle card, their top of their battle card, and you will add the value of that card to the total. So, what are each of these things worth? Bases have a military value of two. Bases, the military value of bases applies uh, to both land and naval battles. Um, Spartan armies have a military value of two. All other armies have a military value of one. So um, in this case here, the military value of the units involved in a land battle is two, three, four, five, six. And the Athenians would have three. Um, then you add the Strategos, so that's five more. So that would be 11 to three. This would make it 12 to three. Um, and then the Spartans had three more for the cards. So that would be 15 to three. Obviously, that's a giant. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you you just add the, you just add up how much strength you've got. The side with the higher strength wins, and um, the difference between the values of the the difference between the values of of the strengths determines than the casualties that can be inflicted. The winner kills uh, enemy units. And basically, whichever enemy units are killed, then get to shoot back at the other at the at the winners to cause casualties to the winners. So the, the losers take more casualties than the winners, as is often the case. Um, Thematically, I get that. Um, <laughs> Naval battles, um, naval battles, the strengths work basically the same, except uh, Athenian navies are worth two. Everybody else's navies are worth one. Bases are still worth two because bases are worth two regardless of army or navy. Um, uh, the 300, the 300, as I said about three hours ago, is both an army and a stratego. So its value counts two when you're counting pieces. And then it counts one again when you're counting stratego. So it's effectively, it has a value of, of um, three. Now, it's important to note that armies only count when you're fighting a land battle. Navies only count when you are fighting a naval battle. So if the Athenians had a navy here, um, you don't count them in the land battle. You just count the armies and the bases. Um, if there was a following naval battle, then this would count. Um, I'm doing a crappy job at this. Um, so it's, what's the incentive to battle? Like, what do you... Battles, as I said before, raids only... Raids only target strategos that are held, you know, by the enemy controlling faction. Battles right, you get, are and you get you, honor from that. You yes, say like, you get three honor. Bases or battles allow you to kill enemy units. Um, so in a land battle, you can kill armies and maybe bases. In a naval battle, you kill navies and maybe bases. Um, When you fight a land battle and you kill an enemy piece, you each faction, um, you you, the winner is going to gain one honor 
per piece killed. The loser gains no honor, even if they kill pieces shooting back. So, and the winner um, being the faction that controls the chits. This would be, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, let's say we let's say we ran this battle like we just did. Um, the the commanding general, the side that owns this chit, gains two honor for every enemy piece killed. The other side, the other Spartan, will gain one honor. So it's good to be the commander. You get more credit. So you gain two uh, for this kill. And, and the other guy, the, the Europontic, would gain one. So, um, so you, you gain honor by winning battles, but only by if you kill units. Um, I see, and then that that's this table right here, the player piece summary, the yeah, the amounts yeah. That they, um, they're worth. Yep. The other things that can happen in battles are this: if there is a land battle, if this isn't, if Athens wins a land battle and they kill a Spartan army, Athens gets to take Spartan hostages. If there's a naval battle. Athens has the win. They can't just kill. They have to win the battle and kill a Spartan. Not a, just the Peloponnesian, but a Spartan. They take hostages. If you, and it works the same way in a naval battle, except if Sparta wins and kills an Athenian navy, they will take Athenian hostages. If you have a ho if you take hostages, you win. The commanding general wins five honor for taking hostages. You can also use the hostages later to. Um, to force the enemy to consider the war and peace issue in their in a subsequent debate. Um, if you kill enough units in a battle, basically three, um, you can also the enemy will also be forced to take up war and peace on their agenda in the next round. So, uh, and that will always start out. Uh, on the on the opposing faction side. So if the if if they were in charge, this would start out over here. If the Spartans suffered a major defeat, basically they're using this as a political issue to get back at the Europontids, regardless of whether they want to actually you know change from war to peace or not, or peace to war. Um, man, I'm doing a crappy job at this. <laughs> um you're doing fine this is a lot i mean i understand what's going on so in that respect you're doing a good um job. the way casualties work is is this um let's say let's say that none of these units were here just for now as i said before um When I was explaining this, strategos have military strength, treachery has military strength. Um, bases have, uh, don't do that. Um, bases have military strength. So it's possible to fight a battle. It's possible to fight a battle even without any actual armies or navies in a, in this in a spot. Um, so, for example, in this case, uh, the Spartans would have strength of five, six, seven, eight, versus put him back in here, put him back in here. So it would be five, six, eight to three. You could still fight a battle here. You'd still draw a card, um, but you can't actually kill anything unless you have in a land battle. You need armies to kill things. In a naval battle, you need navies present to kill things. Um, so let's put this guy in here. A unit's military value, so one for all armies except Spartans. And navies, it works the same way, one for all navies except for Athenians. Um, basically, that military value is how many hits they can inflict on the other side. And 
your military value is also how many hits it takes to kill you. So, um, let's say, let's say, let's say Sparta won this battle um, by two. They could inflict two hits, but since they only have one guy that can actually shoot, they can inflict one hit. Well, that one hit can kill this, but they don't have enough hits to kill the base because the base has a value of two, so it takes two hits to kill the base. Um, uh, so it takes units to kill units. If you don't have units present, you can still win the fight, but you can't actually kill anything. So if you don't kill anything, you don't gain any honor. So if you want to actually kill stuff, you actually have to have pieces in there that can that can kill things. In a naval battle, an Athenian unit can inflict two hits. So if Athens came in here and won a naval battle, this would be a little lopsided. They probably wouldn't win. But if they won and the the difference was two, they could actually kill two units. There is a combat results table up here um, that that explains how the the uh, how the combat losses work. Basically, you can inflict as many hits as you have military value. So these guys kill at one to one. A Spartan can kill two. Um, when you shoot back in a land battle, only the dead guys shoot back, and they shoot back at half. So you need to have lost two guys to be able to kill one guy. Or if you want to kill a Spartan, as you can see from the chart, you would actually have to lose four guys to be able to kill one Spartan. Um, naval battles, the, shoot, the, the casualties when they shoot back, naval battles are a little bloodier. They you you shoot back at at uh, full strength. Um, uh, let's see. Movement. Uh, who's there? I think that's a really bad explanation of, of how battles work, but I will move on from there. Oh, bases. I have to talk about bases. Um, bases are a special case in terms of being able to kill them. Um, let's say we have an Athenian Navy here. And let's say we had five Strategos loaded in here. So Sparta wins this land battle huge. They have, let's say they have 12 loss points that they can inflict on, on the Athenians. Obviously with four land units there, this guy can be killed easily. This can't be touched because it's a land battle and navies aren't affected. So you would think that the overage can be applied to the base. It can't because as long as there is any piece left in the theater, the base can't be touched. So to kill this, the Spartans in one in one military phase, the Spartans were or in one military action, the Spartans would have to win both a land battle, kill this guy and a naval battle to kill this guy. But even if they decided to fight the naval battle as the second battle, they can't kill this guy because they have no navies. So this base will always be protected as long as this navy is here. Um, now it's coming together. Yeah. Um, the other thing about killing bases is, let's say, Let's say the Navy was not there, and let's say three of these guys had moved on to someplace else. Um, 
generally speaking, like I said before, this guy can inflict one hit, but he can only inflict one hit. You can only use him once to kill things. Let's say that there was still a big Spartan win by five, we'll say. So you use the first hit to kill this guy, and this guy does that hit. There's still four, um, four, four hits left over. You don't need units to kill bases. You can kill a base with any, as long as you have two hits to apply, you don't need units to kill bases. Um, but if there's anything there to protect it, you can't kill the base. Gotcha. Um, so as long as a base has both armies and navies present, it's pretty much safe from being killed unless the other side can win both kinds of battles uh, in that theater. Um, yeah, killing a base, it's just like killing another piece in terms of honor. You just get the, if the commanding general wins, they get two and the other faction on that side gets one. Um, if let's say Sparta comes in here and they lose, um, the losing side, the losing side factions always lose one honor per piece lost. Um, the commanding general doesn't lose anything extra for losing. You're just the loser. So you lose one, you know, you know, both sides lose one and the other side, um, they just gain, they just gain, uh, one each. Um, there's more honor. There's more honor to be gained in commanding something that succeeds than there is to be lost in losing something, um, that you're not in charge of. So. The, the best way to gain honor by fighting battles is to be the commanding general of the side that's active. Defenders don't, defenders don't gain any extra honor for just holding on to what they have. Um, if you take hostages as a defender, though, um, the controlling faction does get credit for that. So if you are the defender, if Athens thinks they're special and they come over here with a naval unit and um, Sparta does have a naval unit, and Sparta somehow wins this um, when Athens is attacking, the controlling faction will get the five honor boost for taking hostages because something good happened when you were in charge. Um, okay, movement. Once I get done with movement, I think that's it, except for a quick on redeploy. Um, uh, let's see. Like I said before, um, uh, I skipped over something really important. Oh, it's that. Um, a couple things. Uh, these, obviously, are. In battle, once we've totaled up all, all the pieces and all the strategos and all that stuff, that's when this, that's when the defender's stratego commitment is finally revealed. So the attacker doesn't know exactly what he's up against until the very last moment. Um, so if in that last instance, there were five here, um, and both of the Athenians had decided to commit four, then the Athenian total all of a sudden would jump from three to 11. And that's much closer than you probably want it to be. Um, the other thing is, after these are committed, as the very last step before flipping the card, rolling the dice, basically, the Athenians can use their special state ship. Um, they can the controlling faction gets to decide when to do this. They can, they can apply that stratego to any one military action in a given turn. They can do it as a defender or as an attacker. Um, and sometimes that one, sometimes that one stratego makes all the difference. And this is the important thing that I skipped over a lot. You can only also kill a base, uh, like I said before. Um, as long as there's any unit there, the base can't be killed. If, if there is, if there are no units there, the overage can be applied to kill a base. 
but you can only kill a base if you also have committed the most strategos to a battle. So in this case, even if there was a big wipeout here for Sparta and they had eight more hits to apply to this, if the Spartans had applied or had committed only five strategos and the Athenians had committed eight or even five, base can't be killed. You have to commit more strategos to the battle to kill a base than the opponent. So that's one very good use for the Athenian state ship is if this is five and these two together are four, you commit this, that base is safe. Um, <sighs> movement. As I said before, let's say that the Europontids commit five, the Aegeans commit uh, zero. That means the Spartans can move five units. Um, now, you can move without necessarily having a battle. For example, if the military issue is here, uh, you can still move. Um, there just won't be a battle anywhere. Um, even if you move guys and in the, in the course of moving them, um, somebody ends up here um, and there won't be a battle here. There can only ever be a battle where the issue is. Um, but you can move either, uh, either when there's going to be a battle or if there will be no fighting at all. If there's gonna be a raid, then there's no movement. Um, you can move the number of units up to the number of strategos committed by the acting side. So in this case, it would be five or it might be three. Um, the Spartans can always move the 300 because it acts as its own stratego. It's self-activating. Um, it follows all the normal movement rules that any other army follows. It just moves uh, or it just, it just activates itself for movement. And it also counts as a, as a stratego for all purposes. So um it counts as a stratego for uh the count for killing bases and all that sort of stuff extra one extra strength it's um i think the best way to illustrate movement is to set up well okay let's say that the the military issue is being resolved way up here. At the start of the game, this is kind of an active place. Both sides have guys there. Whoever can get the jump on what's going on up here can maybe have an advantage. Um, so we're resolving the issue up here. It's not in Sparta, so the Europontids can't build anything. So then their next uh, decision is whether they want to raid or battle. Raiding here might be a good option, but instead you decide you want to battle because you want to get some guys up here. So you say, I'm going to conduct a battle here. So everybody would make their Stratego investments. And we find out that the Europontids want to move five guys. Um, now, these five guys that can move can be any unit that you have on the map be any army, any navy, except you cannot move guys that are in the theater where the action is being resolved. These guys are stuck here. Um, any guys that move in there become stuck there. So by setting by setting the issue in a in a theater, you are basically setting one possible destination for units that are moving. Now, any unit can move, uh, except for the guys that are there, but um, you are not required to move to the, to the destination. Um, This is where we have to get into the connections, I guess. When you move a unit, uh, units have to move one theater 
at a time by a connection. So if a guy moves out of Sparta, he has to either use uh, this connection or this connection. As I noted before, land units can any use any connection except for the Navy only connection, which is this one. Naval units can use any connection except for the land only ones, which are these. Um, so Spartans to get out of Sparta have to move here. From here, they can move here, or here, or here, and so on. Uh, Athenian units can always move any basically any place they want out of Athens because land units can move on these. The only one they can't move on is this. Um, Uh, the key to moving is to be able to uh, start moving. Uh, movement is based on being able to exit theater you are in at any given time. Um, the way that the mechanics of movement work um, basically require you to only move one unit at a time. So if you have five If you have five units that you want to move, the best way to sort of keep track of it is to place them near the theater, but not in the theater. So you'll move one unit and then you move a stratego in um, and so on. Uh... Like I said, Movement is based on being able to leave the theater that you are in at any given point and then be able to keep moving until you have to stop. You can't just move a unit and stop it wherever you want. You can only stop in a place where you are required to stop. Um, the two places you are required to stop generally are the issue theater. Like I said, if you move into there, then you're stuck there. You have to stay there. The other thing that can stop you from moving is enemy units. Um, if you enter, let's say that we activate this Spartan army to move because he wants to get up here. Uh, you only move them one at a time. So he starts heading north. He moves here. He cannot stop here. Uh, there are no enemy units here to stop him. And there is no military issue there to stop him. So he keeps moving north. He could move here, here, or here. Um, but he decides to keep moving north. Now, there are enemy units here. The way that you determine whether you can stop there or must stop that you can't just choose to stop. You either must stop or you can't stop. Um, is you total up the military values of the units that can impede movement uh, for the unit that is moving. The Athenians have military value of three, two for the base, one for the army. If there was a navy here, the navy would not matter because the army is moving out over a land connection. Um, so they have three and they have six because they have enough guys basically to hold the door open for this guy he can move here he can continue moving north he gets to thessaly and the athenians have two three four he must stop there is not enough the athenians basically control the exits to this theater so that's one guy that has moved they move another guy. Same thing. He can. He gets here. He has to continue moving. He cannot stop here. Um, there's nothing stopping him from continuing to move. So he continues north. Get here. The same analysis applies. The the Thebans are holding this door open. So he moves up here. Uh, 
now the strength calculation is four versus four. If he left, it would only be four versus two. So this guy alone can't hold the door open for him to keep moving. So he must stop because he cannot, he cannot leave. There's no way that the door is being held open. But now the strength is four to four. So the third Spartan moves. And there, he can't stop. There, he can't stop. Here, suddenly it's four to four. He must continue moving because these guys hold the door open for him at four to four. He gets to Macedonia. There's nothing stopping him from moving, so he must continue moving. He gets to Chalcedice. He must stop because the issue chit basically acts, acts as a giant stop sign. So that's three units that have moved. The Spartans could continue moving units. Um, let's say they want to move this guy. They're happy with what they have up there now, for whatever reason, that probably be dumb. This guy can continue move, must continue moving when he gets here. If he wants to move to Athens, he can move to Athens. He's not required to move here at all. He can move wherever he wants, and he has to continue moving until he gets someplace where he stopped. If he moves to Athens, he has to stop in Athens because Athens has six, eight, ten, so he can't leave. If he wanted to, he could try to leave over this connection, which is a naval connection. Then, instead of comparing land strength, to prevent movement, you compare naval strength. Obviously, Athens is controlling both the land and the Navy exits out of this theater. So he moved here, he must stop. There won't be a battle here. The battle only takes place where the chit is, but you can move him and stop him here, which would probably be dumb because he'll probably get killed there. But you can do that. You don't have to move to this spot. The only key is that when you start moving, you have to, must keep moving until you must stop. Um, let's say instead of moving Spartans, uh, the Spartan player wanted to move a couple of these guys out. So the situation is still like this. This guy could leave because two, three, four, five, there's still five there against the three to hold this door open. This guy could also leave. This guy could also leave. The last guy can't leave because now it would be three to three. So you have to be able to leave the place where you're starting and leave enough strength behind to hold the door open. Um, um, so basically, navies will oppose naval movement. Armies will oppose army movement. The only little tweak in there is, as I noted before, um, if an army wants to move over a light blue connection, you don't compare the army to the army. You compare the, uh, the naval strength in the theater. Um, In terms of connections, there are a few connections that are a little funny. Um, the ones with the blocks and the sticks. If you want to leave, for example, if this Athenian naval wanted to leave Nopactus and move to Corinth on this connection, they could do so because they have a base in the theater. This means that if you want to, navies want to use this connection, you need a base in the theater. So the Athenian Navy could move from here to here because they have a base. If they wanted to move back on this connection, they could not move back because they don't have a base in Corinth. Um, they also couldn't leave because once they got here, the Corinthians have eight, ten, or two, four, five, six, seven strength, and the Athenians only have two. So he couldn't even start moving again because there's no one to hold the door open for him to leave. Um,
Does that make sense at all? Yeah. 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 Um, as I noted uh, a million years ago, if the other thing that constrains movement is if there is peace, Spartans can't move in here. Um, Athenians can't move in where there's red. Um, that's about it for movement. Um, it is possible that because of these blocks, because of these base requirements, sometimes um, sometimes Sparta could maybe move a guy all the way over to here. And even if nothing was here, they would have to stop here because there's no base for them to get back out. That's the one way that you can stop someplace where there isn't an enemy and there isn't an issue stop sign. Um, redeployment in the end phase is not movement. So all of this monkeying around with guys holding the door open for you doesn't matter. If, if you have an appropriate base somewhere, Sparta could move an army, you know, if Sparta got a base over here, they could redeploy all the way over there. Then you're free of all these Athenians being in your way. Um, that's why redeployment is important. Redeployment uh, is in the end phase. Um, it always occurs uh, with the white units being redeployed first, then the blue units, the Athenians, then the uh, yellow units, then the red units. Um, Every unit has to return to an appropriate base in redeployment, except you can keep one unit. Let's say this guy was in Macedonia. You, each side can keep one unit in a place where there is not a base. So if Athens moved a navy into here in the turn, they could keep one unit where they don't have a base. Everyone else, every other theater has to go back to an appropriate base. Athenians can go back to white or blue. Everyone else has to go back to the same color base. So a yellow unit has to go back to a yellow base. The red unit has to go to a red base, so on. Um, there is a stacking limit uh, in redeployment. You can have no more than 15 pieces in a theater. Uh, Total or per side? Per side. So. Um, and I think it's, it's, I think it's armies and navies. The bases don't count. So you could have 15 armies and navies. Um, Makes sense. So redeployment is really important that way, especially if you can, especially for Sparta, if you can get a base over here, because then you're in business. Um, Well, that was like two hours. Um, <laughs> and now it's time for the rolling teach. <laughs> this will actually go pretty fast, I think. Um, okay, you just reload the save probably is faster than putting everything back. Oh, but it's so much less fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we wouldn't have Gerard Butler anymore. Oh, that's very true. Well, yes. I haven't saved as a custom object, so. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I can go ahead and reload. Wait, let me find it. You computer crash. <laughs> Instantaneous. <laughs> okay. Um, no, actually, that 
that went fairly smoothly. Look at us. Yeah, everything looks good. Okay. It is the start of turn six. So if we refer to the Where is play, the turn tracker, by the way? There is no Not turn tracker. Not that it matters. Okay. The okay. best way to keep track of it is there's one event card per turn. So Got it. you just you can either um just shuffle just shuffle the event cards and and take six or two or ten or whatever and once they're they're out that's your last turn or just keep track so aristophanes phase we flip the card we've already done this um there are a few other events that can take place one is the will of the assembly which i touched on a little bit um that will place these pawns in a given theater and you will have an objective to meet if you do not meet your objective uh for the will of the assembly at the end of the turn, each faction in your city will lose five honor, which might be a big deal. It might not. If both sides fail, nothing really changes. Everybody just loses honor. If one side fails and the other succeeds, that's kind of a big swing. Um, we don't have to worry about that now. Another thing that can happen is Alcibiades can move to Persia by event. If Alcibiades is in Persia, Persia is in play. Uh, the Spartans can build bases in Persia using a league issue. Uh, the Athenians, if they want to, can also place um, issues, you know, action shits in, in Persia, but they cannot resolve them there. Basically, they act like rumors. So if Sparta put one in there and you think it's a league issue, which it would be, um, Athens could drop a rumor on top of that so they would control the timing of when the base gets built. Um, the other really pain in the ass thing that can happen with the event deck is plague can hit Athens. Um, there's a plague token. If the plague hit Ath hits Athens, one third of all the units in Athens die. Um, <laughs> it just happens. There will also be effects minor. Let there will also be losses in any contested theater. Um, basically, one naval and one land unit for each side, but you can't lose your last. Uh, land or navy in in a theater due to the plague the plague was a big deal historically it killed pericles um yep. it probably cost athens the war yeah um the plague also has some effects with respect to the cards there are certain cards that are issue aligned pre-plague or post-plague uh the plague can hit up to three times in a game depending on the what events are in there um the first time it hits, you change from pre-plague, post-plague. Uh, after that, the plague hits and it kills people, but it doesn't change this at all. You're either pre or post. Um, and that's basically it for Aristophanes. So we'll put him here. We'll reshuffle that a couple times so we don't know what happens next turn. Uh, it is time to draw cards and construct a hand um so uh take your card into your hand uh your faction leader uh the spartans will each draw eight cards uh from their deck uh the athenians will draw nine cards each Okay, um, I told you before that we are assembling a card uh, or a hand of seven cards, six plus your faction leader. You have nine plus your faction leader in your hand. You can choose three cards that you don't want to have in your hand this time. These cards will form your entourage. You will place the three cards that you do not want face down uh, on the table. Uh, just next to your next to your hidden area, or you know wherever you want to place them. Um, your entourage, you can do two things with your entourage. First, you can do nothing with it. If you do nothing with it, the cards that are stored in your entourage will be available to you to use in the next hand if you so choose, or you can uh, discard any number of them: zero, one, two, or three. Uh, back into the deck for next turn. So 
Um, that's one use of the entourage. You just, you, you put cards there. You might want to put good cards there to save them if you think that's useful, or uh, you might want to just put your crappy cards there and dump them. The second use of your entourage is as follows. If you play your faction leader in a round of debate and your opposition does not use their faction leader in that round of debate, you can use your entourage to boost the faction leader's value, but you don't get to pick any card you want out of your entourage. It will be a random draw from the entourage and whatever the value of that card is, whatever the number of the card is will be added to your faction leader's value. So if you really want to win an issue or you want to win an issue by a lot, um, that is a use for the entourage. If you use your entourage in this fashion, obviously you can only use it once because you only have one faction leader. You also turn the other two cards face up. They will be discarded at the end of the turn. And um, on the following turn, you will only draw six cards and be stuck with those six and like it. You don't get to pick and choose through the nine cards that we have now. The good news is after one card, after one turn of having six cards, you will go back to being able to build an entourage again for what would be turn three. We don't have a turn three. Um, so those are your choices. Um, so which, which six cards do you want to keep and which six cards do you want to dump? Um, each card, and I will keep this guy out, my faction leader. Each card has a value from one to five, uh, which is obvious up in the corner of the card. The other cards, I'm just going to flip this one over because no one cares. Um, the cards are dual use. So um, the aristocrats use the blue, the demagogues use the purple. Same thing works for the Spartans, use the appropriate card. Um, there are 30 cards in the draw deck. There are uh, six of each value. So the, the values are evenly distributed. Um, Uh, let's see. What is not evenly distributed is the information on the card relating to its issue alignment. The issue alignment is the information here on the card. The base value is the number. The issue alignment is this stuff here. There's some flavor text about who the guy is and whatnot. But uh, as I said before, uh, this card, for example, has a base value of three. If the aristocrats use it on a league issue, it is a value of five, and they will gain one Stratego. Uh, most of the Do they alignment, get the Stratego just for playing it or only if they win? All, you get it regardless of whether you win or not. So okay. if you play this on a league issue, even if you lose, you're always going to get that one Stratego. Uh, if the demagogues paid, played this card on a military issue, even if they lost, they would get four Strategos. So that's a pretty good card. Uh, it's Xenophon, yeah, that would be a good card. Um, some, most of the, most of the issue alignment stuff is pretty easy to parse. There are some cards that are, have multiple conditions. Um, you have to meet all the conditions to be considered issue aligned. So if it says, uh, for example, Alcibiades is in Athens and you are the controlling faction, you have to be, you have to have Alcibiades in Athens, which he is, and be the controlling faction to be issue aligned. Most of them are pretty simple. Most of them are plus two military, plus one league, plus four diplomacy, whatever it is, something like that. Um, so we should have seven cards left in our, or six you plus have our leader. Six, yeah. So you will have six of the drawn cards plus your leader in your hand to make up your seven card hand. So, um, so. Now would be a good time to select the cards that you want to select.
Oh my. I should also note that the faction leader, um, as I said before, you can you can play him in any round of debate, just like any of the other cards. He's got a, an issue alignment thing, um, just like any other card. Uh, the only thing is the faction leader also has at the bottom of the card um, information relating to if he's played as the seventh card in the strategy board sequence uh, segment. Uh, that's how many strategos he will grab from this pool. Um, I should note that when we're grabbing strategos in a round, um, both sides just take what they take. When the pool gets low, um, you take what you can take. If there is a fight over the last stratego, the controlling faction gets it. So, um, it works a little differently in the strategy board. In the strategy board, the controlling faction always takes first and they take their full allotment. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So. Uh, the two Spartan factions have their uh, king, the faction leader, but then they also have that seconds card. Is there anything special about that, or is it just you start with this thing at all times? Oh yeah, that was that was that that other card that you start with that good card. Um, that's just that that's a that's part of the scenario setup. scenario setup. Okay, it's, cool. basically those were the two guys that were fighting over whether Sparta should go to war because Got it. right now we're at peace. Yep. So. Um, so that's just a little historical flavor. Mm, I prefer spicy historical to regular historic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I've chosen mine. Okay. Um, I'll go over the strategy board thing right away because it's... Not super important, but it's a little bit important. The seventh card um, in your hand, the one that's not used in the six rounds of debate, will um, determine how the strategy board strategos are allocated. Um, the leader cards will either give you four strategos or two strategos. They're all based on pre-plague or post-plague conditions. So right now we're pre-plague. Um, so if I save my guy for uh, use in the strategy board segment, because I'm the controlling faction, I will gain all four strategos because the controlling faction takes theirs first. If you use any card other than your leader, you only are entitled to one stratego from the strategy board. So if I use my guy in the debates and I put him out there, I'm the controlling faction. I will get my one first. Uh, and if Garrick um, saves, saves his faction leader in this case, he would get two and the other two would go unused. If Garrick just uses whatever card, then he would also get one. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of strategy there knowing that you can, knowing that the controlling faction is going first, um, that they're going to have first dibs on these. So that sort of your faction leader is worth five in a debate, obviously. What the hell did I throw this guy up there for? Um, so he's very useful in debate, but he's also useful here. So that's just a decision that needs to be made. Um, so everybody's got their hand. Now we proceed with. Um, choosing issues to place on the agenda. 
we don't have any hostages right now, obviously, because the game's just starting. Before, uh, before picking issues to place, if you had hostages, you can force the other guy to place War and Peace on their track um, if it's not already there due to an event. So we skip that. Um, the controlling faction now gets to pick one issue in uh, controlling faction in each city will pick one issue and place it on the two spot of uh, of their side of the track. So basically you're saying this is really important to me and I want to win this. You can pick any issue you want, except if you ever pick ostracism or war and peace, war and peace is in that ineligible because it's already on the track. Ostracism and war and peace always go in the middle. So it makes no sense to pick ostracism or war and peace with your basically your preferred issue. So the controlling faction can pick one issue and do that. And Where do we start? Oracle. We all start at 10 on the on honor? Yes. Yep. And then the opposition faction, which is the name for the non-controlling faction, they will pick one issue next and place it in the one spot on their side of the track. So now that I've picked Oracle, Garrett can pick uh, anything that he wants and put it on the one space, except for, of course, ostracism, which always starts in the middle. Um... You took Oracle like a joik. Um... Oh, and do the cities do this simultaneously? Yep, you can do it simultaneously. Okay. Yep, yep. If there's ever if there's ever a doubt as to wanting to see who does what, Athens goes first, so Sparta can react. After the opposition picks theirs. Uh, the controlling faction gets to pick three issues, and they will all go in the center space, the zero space. Uh, I'm picking diplomatic as mine. Okay. So. I will take two militaries and put them out there. That one's locked for some reason. <laughs> I will take two militaries and a league. And then, Derek, you get to pick two and put them in the middle. Oh, you picked League Mango. I was not paying attention. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry. Uh, I asked if you did simultaneously. Yeah. I will take Oracle. Okay. Wait, Badger, you said uh, after the favored ones, we pick two at a time? Until we get to no, I pick so, three, and you, you just pick... yeah, the controller just picks three, then and then you pick, then the opposition picks two. So, oh, okay, got it, got it. Um, this the debate stuff, the assembly phase, all this stuff can all be done simultaneously. I think it's, yeah, for a first game, it's easier to just sort of do it. All right, I'm picking a military and a league. It. Yep. Yeah, I picked two military and a diplomatic. Hmm. Uh, I'll pick a military. Ah, uh, what is the? Now, um, I don't know, what, do the games get resolved before or after War and Peace? Because they're both part of the same segment. Uh, after War and Peace, the, the political issues are resolved uh, right to left. 
as you're looking at that. So it's War and Peace, then games, then the then the special ones. Um, okay. And if there are any of these special ones are involved, Athens always resolves theirs first. Okay. So you can't. So basically, so, if we go to war, then games is going to be. Games is going to be three guaranteed to, to be the war side for. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um. You know, some careful coordination. We keep this peaceful, guys. I don't have to go to war. <laughs> do we? Do Ooh. we want that? Who even Mango? said? It? Why would, are we sure we want that? Who said I'm, not, I'm not sure that we want that. I'm just saying it's possible. Who said anything about <laughs> going to war? Why is that even on your minds? Well, because it's already it's on it's your mind. Clearly, I, all we have to do is nothing. I should I should note here that um, honor order when we set it for doing things in the uh, military phase. Uh, if there's a tie, which there may well be. Controlling factions uh, outrank non-controlling factions, and that may change, uh, you know, before we get there. Uh, and, and Athenian factions, Athenian controlling faction outranks the Spartan controlling faction. So, hmm. if nothing cool. changed right now, the the honor order would be aristocrats, Europonids, demagogues, and agians. So to the extent that that matters to anybody right now, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Um, because turn order, timing and turn order matter a ton. Well, to someone who knows how to play the game, I'm sure. <laughs> that, yeah. Well, no, it'll, it, it will immediately become apparent, you know, yeah. that. So um, we're waiting on, I guess, Drew to pick one oh, more. Oh, yeah, right? sorry. I need to pick one more. I'm just looking at, I'm reading through. I'm just making sure I understand uh, where we are. Play read yeah. card, sorry. You're good. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we're going to do another league. All right. Ready to start with the debates. Controlling faction picks the first issue on the agenda in each city. Um, to the extent that it matters, Athens goes first. I will put a military issue up for debate. Hmm. So then... You can take your time picking one. That chosen, we each faction will play one card face down. Uh, Uh... Oh, and we're only we're only debating six of these issues, but there I, yeah, are yeah. So some certain things will just go. I mean, it's possible. Yeah, there's only six, and okay. you can pick any one you want. So if I wanted to be a jerk, I could have put this. Yeah, on Garrix to try to take it away from him. So right. the only thing that you cannot pick is if an issue ever gets to seven, it's one. It's done. It's hmm. out of okay. out of reach. And do um, you have to pick a different one than what was just debated? Nope, you can keep debating the like if ostracism gets on the table and your city is way ahead, you could spend all six rounds beating each other up over ostracism. Got it. Oh, you would nothing. So that's that, how you you would do nothing on the map and get you do nothing on the board. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Unless you know, unless one of your seated ones was there, but you know. So, um, we'll do them all at once. The the cities can do this. Um, you know, 
at their own pace if you want to, depending on your group's play style and whatever. But for now, we'll just do them, you know, this way. So all cards chosen, we flip them over. So up here, Garrick has a value of four. And I have a value of five. So I win by one. So I can move this issue one space here. I'm issue aligned, so I get two Strategos. Ah, somehow these freaking things are locked. I did not do this. I didn't do it. <laughs> um, now, we're just going to keep these Strategos public. I mean, you can... It doesn't matter because it's easily trackable. According to the game, you, you put them hidden and you pick them behind a screen and you hold them in your hand when committing them. We don't have to do that because we've got this thing. So I'm just going to keep mine out front. So down here, what happened? Uh, Mango wins by uh, two. Two, yep. And we are both issue aligned. So do we yep, both so get both, Stratagoy yep, or is that? Both, okay. Yes, yes, you both get cool, them. Cool. Yep. Um, oh, one I'll, thing yeah. that you always have to do um, is mango one by what, two? Yep. Yeah. You always have to move the full amount that you've won by, except War and Peace can be stopped in the center square, or if it's in the center circle, or if it starts in the center circle, the winner does not have to move it. In other words, uh, okay. someone can't so can force a change. Someone can't force a change of the game state just by putting this into play. So, but otherwise you must move it the full amount. So for example, if the or if if Garrick wanted to win the Oracle and it ended here. Uh, Garrett couldn't decide to just let me have it so that we had it. Um, so you always have to move the full amount except for War and Peace. War and Peace can stop or stay in the center square, center circle. So with that, so then both of these cards are uh, discarded. Make a pile next to your deck. Um, a note on the discards. These... This deck will be fully reshuffled every hand, save anything that you hold over from your um, entourage. So there's no deck management in that way. Um, but that won't happen until the very end of the turn because you need the these to create the battle deck. So if one side does have a lot of really good cards in their hand, that probably means their battle deck isn't going to be as good. but the maximum shift you're ever going to get in a fight is four because the highest card is five and the lowest card is one. So that round being done, uh, the opposing faction in each city now picks an issue to debate. How the hell? Uh, you're locking stuff, man. I don't know how you're doing it. I don't know. I, I don't know how I'm doing it either. <laughs> Can I pick the same one that we just debated? You certainly can. You can pick anything except you pick literally or something anything. that okay. gets to seven. Yeah, so if you want sure. to spend okay, your right. time beating each other over the head over one thing, you can do it. I, I, mean, I don't know how much we're supposed to talk to each other, but don't do no, that. Yeah, that's, that's the other <laughs> no, thing. No, I, no, I wasn't no planning on it. I just wanted allowed. to. Yeah. It's oh, there, you can't, a, can't collude? Right. It's supposed to be a communicate by play sort of Oh, interesting. You know, we like hate each other, Mango. There we don't talk. Tacit, there We're not friends. There's a tacit agreement <laughs> that you don't mess with mine and I don't mess with yours, but. It has to be tacit. Can't be explicit. Right. Uh, okay. um, um, what's... Sure. Uh, let's, let's get this thing going. And you can make deals in this game, especially in the. Uh, Military phase, but nothing's binding. Nothing can ever change hands. You can't show people your cards. Um, uh, 
So you get seven right. to my yeah, six. Yeah, I win that by one. Yep. We both get pops over here. So Derek wins by First two, two and we both get two. You um, got three. Nice. Oh, yeah, we both got Stratagoy. Nice. Cool, cool. More of those. Seems good. <laughs> All right. On to round three. I'm going to go with uh, Diplomatic this time. Go League. Ready? <laughs> nice. OK, nice. I get two Stratagoy, and you win the thing by one. Get I, get one I, get a, I get a Stratagos. So, yes. ah, Stratagos. So it's like one to me? Yep, one to you, and we each get, uh, you get three. I get three Stratagoy. Uh, um, so there's three rounds left, right? Uh, Correct. Yeah, two. that was. Yeah, three. that was three. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah, we'll be left with one card in our hand. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And what is you, what is that one card left in hand do again? Pardon? What is the, the card, seventh card do again? The last again? card in your hand is for the strategy board. Uh, and remind me how that works. Uh, you will either get the number of Stratigos that your leader card gets you, or you will get one. And the controlling okay, so they're... faction... Yes. Okay, the controlling they're... faction gets all of theirs first. So... Right, right. Okay, so yeah, that, that seventh card so, is always just worth one, or if it's your leader, then it's worth whatever it worth says on more the than one. And it. okay. because it's pre-plague, I think... You, I don't remember which one is which, but yeah. So it'll either be worth four or two, and you might not even get two because if you're not the controlling faction. So that makes sense. Uh, and then just, I know we talked about this already, but uh, just at the ends of this phase, what's the three? What's the order of the three things that change? First, it's first leader is first, honor. right? Oh, yep. honor first. Okay. Honor, and that's based on the value. So right now, Garrick, uh, right now Garrick has two, three, four, five, yeah, and five. I have three. So okay. Garrick would win two, and you guys down there, I don't know what you got, but yeah, yeah. But it's the di it's the difference between it's the difference. Say more than three to five at the moment. Uh, yep. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, and that can that maxes out at uh five honor, right? You can't three. lose or gain three. Oh, three. Okay, three. Yep. Cool. Yep. Okay, then the the leader changes, right? Second. Yes. Then the controlling faction, and then uh, then the then the favor then the of the assembly. Favorite. And those are based. Okay. Those based cool. on just the raw number of issues one. Those are based on the raw number of issues one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Hmm. You get to pick the next. Uh, yeah, I know. I just am cool. trying to think based on all of that. <laughs> Process all that information. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And just make a decision. Simple. Um. Okay. And there's three more to be. Okay. All oh, right. Because yeah, I have four cards left. So there's three more. All right. Ready, Badger. Um, Big guy. So you win it by, two, uh, you win it by two. I could use my. Okay, well I don't know why I'm. I won't use my. my cards. Use only, my, uh... only military left, so we're picking a military. Wait, wait, you can pick. You can pick ones that are already on. I know I could pick one of the other ones. Yeah, yeah. I just wait, I want to. I do want us to not suck on the actual military theater. So I'm <laughs> I agree. Let's clearing these suck. out, then we'll we'll figure out what to fight over later. <laughs> Let's not suck. <laughs> so you win that. You win that one by two. two. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then I get two Stratagoy. 
Uh, so what happens in the tie? Uh, I think it tie, doesn't it move. Does not, oh no! Move. Yep. That's terrible. Damn. Yes. <laughs> um, for for this, and he gets his stratagoy first, right? Uh, you split them up evenly, so okay. um, oh, so, we so we get one yeah. and one. The controlling faction takes the odd one if they're okay. if you can't split. But, yeah. but in the strategy board, the controlling faction has a marked advantage. Okay, so now that this pool is gone, the, the issue strategy is irrelevant. Anymore. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, you still get the bonuses, but other than the bonus at the end, yeah. Okay, I'm starting to pick up on this a little bit. All right, Mango. Okay, we're now gonna, now we're getting serious. Piece. Now we're getting whoa, whoa. serious. <laughs> Mango, there's two left. <laughs> We got to get all our dudes out there. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm going after Garrick's diplomatic issue. Oi! Now, now the gloves are off. Now I mean, the gloves yeah, are I, off. There's there's other reasons for me to take that issue from. So I've eight to your get wrecked. <laughs> oh, it doesn't move. <laughs> all right, you ready, Badger? Yep. All right. I have a strength okay. of five. Um, so this is the last one. Yeah. So it moves two for me. Yep. She should probably do one of those military ones. Uh, yeah. Let's get, uh, let's not suck one. mango backstabber. So guys, how did one of your strategy end up up in our space? Probably got thrown in a fit of rage. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. dropping on I got angry. operations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... Yeah. Well, so you just. King is better. You just I've had got seven. You had to so go I... for the throat, Badger, huh? Uh, do you have. Yeah, okay. We both have seven. Let's go after your so Oracle then. It stays then. right where it was. Oh, it stays where we both have seven. Sorry. I, yeah. Yep. I didn't realize you would use your leader too. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Uh, yep. You get, yeah, we both get two on any. Oh, okay. So five, uh, leaders five probably should five. come back to us instead of going five to discard, five, so right? No, no I mean, yeah, which, uh, Badger, what do we do with our leader if we've played it? They don't go to the discard pile. I, right? just, I just threw mine back in my. Yeah, in my you always have it, area, so it seems so, like yeah. makes sense to. Yeah, otherwise you got to pick through the discard for him, and that's. Neat. Okay. Sorry, what's the advisor? What are the not advisors? You know, the brain uh, entourage. <laughs> yep. You what do can they do? Use the, Mango, if, why did you do this to us? <laughs> You're, if this you is terrible. Use your, if you use your faction leader, <laughs> we're going to war and we have one military ship. <laughs> if you use your faction leader and he is not opposed by the opposing faction leader in a given round of debate, you can use your entourage to boost his value. Okay. But you only you don't get to pick which card it is. It's a random draw of the three. So. Oh, wait, hang on. Sorry. Say that again. If you use your faction leader in a debate in a round of debate. And he's not opposed by the opposing faction leader. That's oh, the other. Okay, use that's for the your criteria. brain. That's called that's called using your brain trust. I don't know why there's different terms for it, but. Your entourage oh, okay. becomes your brain trust if used here. But yeah, um, we, we both played our leader, so you can't use Entourage at all, right? Yes. Yeah, if it's leader versus leader, then it's just... Lame. Yep. I mean, I did it to keep all of my... To keep the controlling faction and to get more honor because I wanted to push it right. further over. That's why I did it. Yeah, but... Okay, so neither side had... We could have... We could have... <laughs> yeah. You could have at least played something so, on one of those military instead of targeting this <laughs> so neither side had ostracism on the table so now we have to go through the process of figuring out who won what so the first thing you do is figure out the honor and that's based on the values of the issues that are won yep. so um garrick is going to win up here because he's got two four five six and i've got three so garrick gains three and i lose three Um, leader is total number of chits, which just stays where it's at because we're tied, correct? Yes, if you're tied, it stays 
Um, yeah, the first the first tiebreaker is um, favor of the assembly. Then the second is whoever wins the most honor. So, um, got it. Okay. So the Europe Pontids would keep it. In ours, Garrick becomes the controlling faction because he's got four and I've got three. Rightfully so. Um, and then um, the favor of the assembly goes to the side that won the most. So Garrick gains the favor of the assembly. Down here, it's a tie, so it does not move. Cool. So now we resolve the issues. War and peace. We are going to war, so we switch out the white pawns for the black pawns. Neither side won the games issue, and the uh, unique issues were not on the table, so that's it for resolving the political issues. Um, so now we take up the action chits so you can just place them you know right with your and then you also get the two rumors and so then we will have the Corbett. Eric will have five chits, <laughs> and I have five chits, so we don't have to exchange any. Cool, cool. And we have four and five, so we're also yep. good, yes. Oh, almost forgot. Everybody's got one last card. Um, oh, yeah. When does that get discarded? Just now. So okay. I'll put them up. Yeah. So Should we have both, done it before. We, yeah. So we both so, just take one. Yep. So Garrick has his leader left, I believe. Yep. So he gets two for pre-plague, and I will take one. And I will discard mine, and Garrick will take his back. Um, so, in the honor, or the, uh, so Mango has five and Drew has four. Yeah, so no no chits need to change hands right down there. So we flip them all upside down and take them. Take them into your play area. Okay. Honor order is determined. Looks like Garrick is one. Mango is two. Okay. On to the theater phase. Garrick gets to place the first issue oh goodness um you said you said while well, he's thinking about that you said earlier that you keep the strategoi public but isn't it well, aren't there a bunch no, of actions it, where it's like keep secretly it, decide how many you play yeah that's what yes, it's these are for according to the rules you keep them private you keep them behind a little screen that you get with the game okay. um since we're using the this to commit it doesn't really matter i mean it does oh, if you want to play the memory game see. um but since the pool size is known it's kind of there are 26 five going the strategy board which makes 21 he's saying don't oh, make us write down our pool I see. Size. So, so yeah yeah so, the pool size everyone yeah, yeah okay that's yeah and if you follow what happened in the debates you can pretty much know what everybody has so, I mean, you could play it either way. Um, just for learning game purposes, I thought we'd just keep them out here for now. 
Yeah, no, that makes sense. I didn't realize this thing was for. Yeah. Also, because yeah, in, the hidden in track the copy is you, Yeah, in the physical copy, you hold them. Get out of here, Gary. Oh, yeah, just paper, wrong. scissors. And, <laughs> yeah. So. I have facts and logic on my side, Drew. You just have feelings. <laughs> oh, God. Don't. don't. <laughs> How about this? From now on, we play as games were meant to be played, and you can just get out your pen and paper that you keep threatening. Uh, I would do. I would do <laughs> and that. Just write it down. I would penally do, do that in, What's, in I, real that's life. Fine. That's fine. I don't care. Does not make a good. You're, stream. The, one, you're the one with the camera, so you can actually prove it. Yeah, just hold it up on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the rest uh, of us can do that. Play Pax Premier as it was intended to be played, and you know you can have your your little pen and paper. <laughs> This is psychological warfare right here. Garrick's up. You know, Pax Premier doesn't specify whether the discard is face up or face down. So intended to be played. Let's, let's start interpreting things. Uh, hidden cards, hidden discard, true hidden information. I bet you if we asked Cole at the World of Games Discord, <laughs> <laughs> he would say that he plays with hidden info. He can be wrong. Mm. I'm not afraid to say that. <laughs> all right, got to remember what these things all do. <laughs> I know, right? No. <laughs> Military is move and fight. Maybe build if it's at home. Um. League allows you to build league things. So, um, Badger, what yes, what we, do you what do you feel our goal is as the joint well, city state of Athens? Now that this, you guys are friends again, yeah. Now that we're <laughs> friends, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this place is um, vulnerable because I see to, that. The other question is, do we Wait, want which to... place is vulnerable? No, don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm asking because I want to piece together why. Before. It's well, Cyclades. Okay, that's what I thought you pointed out, but I actually don't yeah, see why that you, is the case. If, if you place a diplomatic issue there. Oh, right. We could just and you it. play that's right. that's three right. strategos. Your three is greater than the value of two. So you would flip this. That's right. I was completely but forgetting about the way the to diplomatic counter that action. is for us is to increase its protection either by moving stuff there or building stuff there. But if you want to do that, you want to do that before the Spartans get a diplomacy in there. If well, really, you want to lay, do it after right. they get a diplomacy. Right. right. So, so you we have to, to hold that. Yeah, if you need to hold that to do that last. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah. Wait, you want? Wouldn't you want to do that before a diplomacy? Yes, but yeah. it's, it's first in, last out. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, right, right. Put that down yeah, last. The, in terms of yes. like action order, you want to. So, go first, do you, which do means you like, recall? Do you yeah, recall okay. if Badger won something useful there? Because Badger's the only one to be able to stop us if we had a diplomacy, because we're between them in honor order. Uh, well, I as long as that's fine. As long as a league issue gets held for last. Because you can just keep if we wanted to, we could pile every single issue in the game here. So, yeah, I, I do remember that they won more chits than us. Thanks to your shenanigans, Mango. <laughs> what? So, I, mean, I have no idea what you're talking about. So they do have to go first in this case, yep. which normally would be a disadvantage if we wanted to guarantee the, that. But we can't because they have more chits. Uh, so they go first thing, and last. His, <laughs> another thing historically, Garrick, that Pericles did was, uh, you know, we've got the Navy and you could run the Navy into Sparta with one military, and then you could raid with the next military. Um, I'm not telling them who's got what for us, but they don't have enough military to do that. Right. So <laughs> I and, do remember and that. Those, and those navies are basically invulnerable because 
yeah unless they move these navies in to fight um there's nothing here that can kill them because they don't have any navies to kill our navies so uh, man i can't believe i have to make decisions <laughs> what kind of a game is this? <laughs> Just for fun, Garrick, I'm going to show you this. And then you'll have to... Oops, I have to... Yeah, I was going to say, you have to flip that when you it's can, over here. You can flip it. Okay. You can flip it. Okay. I was thinking of using that somewhere, using the second option maybe make hmm that would create vulnerabilities for them that was one thought I had I wasn't going to just use it for the three honor sure you weren't This is definitely the but part that's to, opaque. But to I would me right have now. to save that for I would have to save that for later if you wanted to move in there. You know. But the question is, do you want to hit first or hit last? So and are they going to be there first? Because if they're there, if they're there and we have to fight on their terms, then that might not be great. So You don't want to get caught somewhere where you are at a disadvantage. Yeah. So is it a horrible idea to just place this down? Nope, that's not a horrible idea at all. Nope. In the long game, in the very long game, Eastern Mediterranean starts in play. Because Athens and the allies over here were still fighting the Persians in that time frame. And one of the early goals for Athens is to end the war with Persia. And that's what closes down the Eastern Med. Athens actually fought the Persians in Egypt, Cyprus, places like that. And one of the things they need to do early in the game is get out of that war because the longer the war goes, it starts costing the controlling faction honor. So. But that's already done. So the piece of Callius is in place and this is out of play. I'm going to throw this up there. So it's during this phase, we can communicate with the other factions yes. in our city. Yep. And you can show. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Uh, quick question. If uh, if you play a military chit to build stuff, does yep. it uh, is it count only your bases or does it count both yours? No, and just the your city state bases. OK. So like, for example, if Athens had one here and they also had a league base there, you would just build this one would build and this one would build these okay. guys wouldn't build okay so basically with effectively league is the only way to build uh league units Correct. for league action okay yeah cool it, it seems like league is the only way to do anything with league units except for move them yeah and yes. fight with them okay yeah and cool. you can only build units in like we can only build units in sparta in sparta yeah Right. Well, uh, if you had a league, if you had a league issue, you could place it here and build. The other thing that the league issue does is it allows you to build new bases, provided you already have a piece there. And it doesn't have to be a base. So, for example, if you moved this guy up here first and then had a league issue there, then you could get a league base built here. But that costs four strategos. So, it, you know, then you're you're budgeting your your resources. So a lot of the issues, a lot of the issues, you can't just look at them at what they can do, but you have to look at them sort of as a combination of punches. Yeah. Um, you 
And depending on how things worked out in the debates, that sometimes means that you have to sort of coordinate with your teammate slash enemy. <laughs> so. And yes, you can talk, you can even, you can whisper, you could send secret messages if you wanted to in this part. Right. Uh, and the the granary spaces are not relevant. In not this game, relevant to right? this because scenario. of the short scenario. Okay, cool. Yeah, basically the the actual war was lost for Athens when they lost the hell spot. Yep. Because the they received a lot of grain from the shore of the Black Sea, came through there. The Spartans finally won a naval battle, shut this down. The Persians basically financed the whole thing. And Okay, I'm playing also in whatever the hell that is. <laughs> <laughs> Chalcedice? DJ? Chalcedice, That's maybe? Italian. It depends on who you ask and if you want to use actual ancient pronunciation or contemporary pronunciation. They they had no soft Cs yep. technically originally, so that would be Calcadique. Uh but for some reason like contemporary scholars have just chosen to ignore that about half the time and only when there's a vowel after the C. <laughs> it's very confusing. An old chalky up there. An <laughs> old chalky. <laughs> <laughs> you could also just say Chalcedon, I suppose. When um, the war broke right, out, so... Athens was besieging a city up here that had ties to Corinth. And the siege went on for a very long time. And eventually the Athenians won. Um, Alcibiades was there. Socrates was there. It was a big party. <laughs> Dude, Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that space is really interesting because we can't get any navies up there. Yeah, that's, that's the basic st strategic problem for Sparta. What do you need navies for? Scenario. You, can, you can just march people all over land. It's fine. Yep. <laughs> they can swim, march damn it. Is... They know how to walk. Okay. As long as this navy is there, that makes things tough for you. Yeah, exactly. As far as and killing this. no way to get rid of it, really. Which is why treachery comes into play. But then this is worth two in defense, and this is worth another one in defense. So two, three... Five. Oh yeah, that's right. Treachery is diplomacy, right? Yep. Yeah. You have, you have you to build it up. Commit yep. three strategy. Unless something is very weak. Yep. Strategoi plus friendly treachery is greater than twice enemy bases. So two currently yeah. plus basically basically it's just the military value so of the base. One, it's, two, it's the same three, thing. four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'd have to have nine total. Two. So we'd have to have six treachery there plus three strategy. No, it's just, it's no, just, it's just two, five, three, right? Five. So you'd need six. Oh, but so only the bases get doubled. Yeah. It, the base is just worth two. That's how it's I read two it. times the number of bases. I don't know why you just. Why don't, they, why don't they just say combat strength of everything? I don't know. Yes, okay. I don't know. So it's total just, combat really strength. Weird. Yes. Yeah. So we need. We'd need, so we'd need uh, five. So we'd if need, we commit three strategy, yeah, so we would need two need more three treachery. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And that's that's if nothing else gets in there. Sure. Will you stay out? <laughs> nope. Nope. Yeah, I think Whisper is a TI4 mod only thing, Garrick. No, that's it's a thing. Yeah, it's really? a thing. I just don't I've know. only ever seen it work in the TI4 mod. Oh, wait, I know what we should do. We should just turn on friggin' teams. Teams? I see both the blue and the brown. Hmm. But I don't know if that's because brown is capitalized or... 
No, we saw the blue, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can see both of the. Well, obviously, I can see <laughs> the brown one. There you go. Teams. Oh, there's a team chat. Okay. Well, Megan oh, and I were just using Discord chat, but. So how yeah. do you work then? Oh, you just uh... go to the team tab and you can send just to your team. It's also it's a slash, not a not an exclamation point. Garrick. Got it. Oh, that's right. Where's the where's the team? If you look at the top of your chat window, there should be a third tab there now. It says team. Oh, I got you. Yep. Hmm. So, oh yeah, do you, are you still figuring to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um. Oh, I can see your stuff now in your hand. Nice. Oh, that is super convenient. <laughs> I was gonna say we can just use Discord chat, but uh, this is very helpful being able to see inside the boxes. Okay. Um. Yes, but if I keep all tabbing out of TTS to go to Discord, I'll keep pinging the map over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, Mingo. <laughs> that is actually nice, but <laughs> it is. <decent. laughs> but yeah, right, Mingo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Hmm. Oh, crap. I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it would help. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, uh, I think. Plus, we'd have to get them there, and that would be difficult because they can't go directly there. They have to go through everything, all roads. Well, I guess all sea um, lanes go, go they... to Athens. Oh wait, they can. No, they can... they they can. Yeah, we could we could go around. Right, there. got oh, it. Right. Yes, that would be the go whole point. Around. That would be to <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. Uh, I don't hate that because it, you know it could be a start of something, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, go for it. Um, OK, I'm going to place an issue in Boyosha. I don't actually know how to pronounce that one. Too many vowels. Boyosha. Boyosha. Boyosha is probably something like great. Boyosha. <sighs> That's um that's uh, Ali G's catchphrase, right? <laughs> I think the most stressful part of a teach is the fact that like you can't miss anything. But now I can yeah. get up and go get a drink and I'm like it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Garrick. Um uh, where'd you place Badger? Up in the Macedonia. Uh, Macedonia. Macedonia. Cool. Macadamia. M Macedonia. Macadamia. <laughs> <laughs> They're nutty up there. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, that's it. Now, now we have to. Now we have to pronounce everything with hard C's only. <laughs> <laughs> just so, just so that joke can live on forever. <laughs> Macedonia it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> this this stream is gonna be so much keyboard clickety clacketing between the four of us. Well, I'm, I'm just coming. thinking it's. I'm just sorry, viewers. I'm thinking Most this is stream ever. This is Cerebria all over again. <laughs> oh gosh. Um. Don't worry, we will continue to make nut puns <laughs> while Gary is <laughs> thinking and typing. <laughs> When we're resolving these later, are we allowed to like check the top of the stack if it's ours? Or is that all memory? <laughs> it's all memory. Okay. Uh oh, Garrick. Better get out your pen and paper. <laughs> Where did you place, by the way, Garrick? I, I haven't placed. Yet. <laughs> oh, sorry, Garrick didn't place. Nope. I'll drop that there. So league issues do nothing in neutral theater, right? right? You basically need to have I mean, you can put it there in anticipation of moving a unit in. Um, but if you don't have something there when it's resolved, it's done. Just nothing happens. <laughs> I guess when I said boatload, uh, I didn't literally mean boats. <laughs> but good point. <laughs> oh, I was muted. I think my point still stands, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be so many out of context conversations from our side. At least the stream can see Garrick's chat. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Are you going to stream snipe him? <laughs> stream sniping a board game. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think what you said makes sense, though, Mango. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it develops. Garrett, you placed in Bosha? Uh, I did. Okay. Um... I'm also going to place in Bosha. Um, I will play in Macedonia on to the Badger. Uh. I'm going to go up. North. Uh. The hitboxes on these is pretty. Yeah. I kind of like the blocks and the sticks better, but. Yeah, I was talking about that in chat. It seems a lot easier to manage than the plastic pieces that aren't actually that nice looking in this. Also, maybe it's just me, but these boats look like little like millipede things with the way the oars look zoomed out. <laughs> they totally <Yeah>. do. <laughs> and I want nothing to do with that. 
<laughs> just so they're little. Um, they just have eyelashes. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's lesser, more scary. I don't know. <laughs> All right, you're up, Mango. I dropped a chit into Athens. You did, didn't you? What are you up to? Uh, placing a chit. <laughs> a likely story. <laughs> 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 All right. Drew, I placed in Bosha. Um, I will place up here in Calcadice. Badgers that. So, so, um, if you're moving across a solid blue route with land units, do you compare yeah. the strength of the land yeah. units to the enemy navy or the your navy? No, to the enemy navy, navy, navy to navy. Navy so, to navy. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it's always based on where you're exiting from. Right. Not where yes. you're entering. Right. Okay. Yeah, you can get into you can get yourself into trouble easily. You just can't get yourself out of trouble easily. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> just like real life. <laughs> uh Badger's we... placing, right? Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay. okay, cool. You're good. I just always have that I get that scene here, like, wait, are we waiting on me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this game is delicious so far. <laughs> Although I have no idea what I'm doing, but I can you can see the all the interesting nuances once you actually know what you're doing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to place that there. Where? Macedonia. Some... Yep. Macedonia. <laughs> um, Badger, now that you're done placing, who decide? since we don't actually technically know whose chits are whose, who decides what order to flip them in? When it comes to it's it's just in honor order. So once we're done placing them, Garrick will be able to pick the first one. Oh, and he just picks okay. A blue, got it. And he just, he just picks, picks any blue. blue one. But yep. then that then whoever's whoever, shit it is is the one yes. who does yes. the thing. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Cool. Man, that's really interesting too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Garrick's up. So Garrick's got two. Yeah. And you guys, you guys each have two. I or? have two. Drew has one. Uh, yeah, I Drew have one, one left. Although, we probably didn't have to tell you that. <laughs> I'm just gonna mute Drew for the rest of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta rely on Garrick's pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Badger, I messaged you. I don't know if you saw that. You did? I said Badger. Oh. <laughs> I was like, why would you message me? It's not all about you, Drew. Un <laughs> Uncouth things were said. <laughs> not even appropriate for the stream. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> All right, I dropped a token into Cyclades. <laughs> or Kiklides, Kiklid I guess. Kiklides, yes. Is... Kaikladles. <laughs> <laughs> that one actually is Kiklides, I'm pretty sure, because they're, even with modern pronunciation, because there's no uh, E or I after the C. 
it's ERI that makes it soft. I forget. I feel like I've heard Cyclades when people mention. You've heard plenty of people say Cyclades, but that's wrong. It rhymes with Everglades. <laughs> <laughs> So who's in the process of replacing all the pieces over here? <laughs> uh, it's Mango who also is up to place a chip. So. Yeah, that's the wrong <laughs> use of your time. <laughs> I know where my chips are going now, so it's not much point. <laughs> um, yep, this one's going right up there. All right. Uh, my chit is going to Boyosha and on to Badger. <laughs> Mango, I like your cats. <laughs> I'm surprised that Mike picked that up. He was in the other room. He's loud, though. <laughs> I should get a cat so that we can meow together on stream. <laughs> and by that, I mean our cats can meow together. No, 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 no. You said what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on pen and paper. <laughs> yeah. You uh, also have it on a recorded stream, but I guess, I guess pen and paper works. <laughs> So, Carrick, I really want to know why <laughs> we didn't insist on playing Churchill and slowly working our way up to this first. Um, I would have preferred that. <laughs> <laughs> because For now sure I'm really wondering why we did just start with Pendragon. <laughs> Churchill is a lot less involved in this. Uh, the military part is basically non-existent compared to I was going to say, it seems like there wouldn't really be a military phase or much of one. There, there is, but it's it's not involved like this. Yeah. Basically in Churchill in the military part, you can choose to put your fate in the hands of the dice or not, and um, and pay the price accordingly. So, hmm. basically, in this game too, there's not much in the way of variability in the battles. I mean, it can swing by four. Right. So, yeah. if you put yourself into too many fair fights, you get what you get. You know. So. The idea is to crush the other guy and kill as much as possible for the honor. <laughs> so. Right. Uh, is it Garrick up? No, it's Badger. Oh, okay. oh it's it's me. Yeah, Where? it's you. Where did... Oh, because Drew was out. Yeah. Yeah, I ran. I ran out. I thought you were thinking. That's why we were tippity tapping into each other. <laughs> well, I was thinking. I just. Um, I'm going to go up here. All right. I'll go up there. That, that stack's a little precarious. Sticking with our, sticking with our plan here. All right, that's the last one. Back to, or yeah, I'm out, so back to Badger. Put this there to control the tempo. Yep, I like it. So we're, we're all out of chits, so we start 
resolving them. And again, it goes in honor order. Uh, what do you think, Badger? Kalkidichi? Kalkidichi? I would say go for it. All right. It is a military. So it's not a home theater, so there's no building that goes on. So it is a contested theater. So Derek has to decide whether he wants to raid or fight a battle. I will raid. Yep. So that costs three. Three strategos. And you just put them back in the, yeah. in the pool right away. And you gain three honor. And the city gains three honor. And then you flip a battle card. And that's how many Stratego's Mango will lose. And why is it Mango and not me? It's because he's the controlling, controlling, the controlling faction. faction. That's yep. right. Cool. All right. Five. <laughs> <laughs> I lose five. Yes, that's a crippling blow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say. So okay. well, that that that's it. Oops, I'm sorry. That's Go fine. Ahead and grab it. It's yours. So Mango gets to choose, and he's only got. He one. doesn't get to choose. Yep. 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 So this is also a military. OK, so. You can. Yes, you you can do one of two things. You can pay one Stratego and do nothing or you can pay. Um, whatever number of Strategos you would like to pay and move that number of units. Yes, there I won't be a. Yep, I there think won't be a battle because there is nobody there to fight. Right. Now let's see the. Um, this this place, this army that's in Thalas, uh, Thessalia has like four stopping power, right? Right. Yep. OK, so I think I am going to uh, let's see what. Where is... And can we combine Stratagoy here? No, nope, only, only when there is a... going to be a battle. Yeah. Um, so basically at most he can move. I can move three, three units. Units. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and move three units. Yeah, we could just park some people in Thessalia. Yeah, I'm going to take two from here. So that one moves to there and has to stop. Moves to there and has to stop. Oh, and then one can go through to Mastodon. Yes, and one can go when, yeah, one will have to go four. through. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right. And then Drew's uh, up. I am next, so I will resolve this as, oh, oh shoot. Uh -oh. As a whole stack. <laughs> whole stack. This is the only option. It is a rumor. OK. Badger. A mango rumor. Rumors of mangoes in Mac Macedonia. <laughs> rumors of mangoes Norm in Macedonia. <laughs> Norm normally they only <laughs> produce nuts, but we've heard strange tales. Uh, what do you think, Eric? This one? Uh, yeah, I was thinking one of these two. Yeah, let's do Athens. OK, man, I'm proud of all of the audience for sitting through all of our silence only to endure our terrible, terrible, terrible jokes. <laughs> they I come mean, for the jokes. Here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's face it, if they're watching at this point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're either asleep or they're here for the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I expend a certain number of uh, Stratagos, if, depending on what I'm building, wanna, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, is it? Yeah, you have to spend four to build. Yeah, it's system. either. Okay. it's either. Yeah, yeah, it's four. Yeah. That's really your only option. Okay, well, I will spend four because I like the idea of putting a base there. 
And then you gain two honor for building a base. Oh, I didn't know about that. I was just doing it for my country. A likely story. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then it's my turn to... Uh, so we now skip both of us because Sparta doesn't have any reveal. Well, no, that yeah, was Badger's. So that was Badger's. Badger. Yeah, I, I flipped that one, so it's Garrick's. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah so Garrick's up then. Uh, and what do you think, Badger? I think do the other one right away. That you're... Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, it's a league. Yep. So you can build one, one navy or two armies, and it costs nothing to build units. It costs nothing uh, to build units. Wait, Garrick, this is a league base, not an Athenian yep. base. You need to build a Delian league, a white one. Oh, do I? Yep. Military is the only way to build uh, Athenian. No, bases. you can you can upgrade a. Oh, that's uh, right. You can upgrade with yeah. league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, yeah, let's build some troops over here, I guess. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then while he's doing that, oh, it still is going to skip both of us, so Badger, you'll be up next. Yes. What do you think, Badger? Uh, Land or Navy? Probably well, Navy, because it's a naval area. Navy is aligned to it, but if you put two guys in there, it's a little more defense, because it's, you know, it's two value. You know, navy's probably they're I don't know. If we're not going to move them anywhere, then armies are the right answer. But all right, let's just drop the two armies then. Yeah. <sighs> let's do this one. military yep i will also raid so. <laughs> even though there's nothing to raid <laughs> well i can't kill strategos but i can get some honor so. right i'll take this flip it over and okay so mango flips this one well, no, Garrick's up. Yeah, I'm after. up. I'm up. Oh, right, duh. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and what do you think, Badger? This one over here? In Macedonia? Yeah, yeah. It's an oracle. I will... Kill um, this guy. An aristrat aristocrat oracle. And take one honor. Uh, where'd you move the league piece, by the way? Oh, I... here. Right. I threw him back in the dead zone. No, I know. I I, I didn't know which piece you removed. Yeah. It was from here. Yeah. Right? You have to okay. kill. Yeah, you can't take a base. It has to be a a unit. Army or navy. Um Well, all right, Manko, you're up. Yep. Oh, or is it indeed? That's Mango. Um, hmm. I will go ahead and flip this one here in Macedonia. Macedonia. It is All right. Oracle. It is my Oracle, so I'm going to take three honor. That's very public spirited. Well, there's nothing really useful to do with it. I would happily remove like an Athenian boat, but it's league only, so. All right, back to Badger. Oh, and no, no, I'm I'm next. Oh, you're. Oh, that was. Uh, yeah. Mango got it. Yeah. Um, so the yeah, I, guess fairly limited, I yeah. will uh, flip this thing. Hey. So now it's back to Badger. Hmm. 
I am going to spend three Strategos and take that base. Because we have three versus two. So I think that is, yes. I gain two honor and the controlling Spartan faction loses two honor. Ouch. Oops. Turns out being controlling faction sucks. <laughs> we could add so much more military, Mango. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right we'll, we'll make it all up on turn two out of two. <laughs> What do you think, Badger? This one? Yeah, that. Yeah, yep. Rumors. All right. Mango flips this one, which is also rumors. <laughs> and then I don't have anything to flip, so it's back to Badger. I guess. You may as well wait, maybe. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's a rumors. All right, so Still now Garrett whatever is happening here game. happens. Yep. It's a rumors. All right, so League is me first. For me. Um, I will spend four Stratagoy uh, and place a League base. Right there it is. So that's two for Drew. Uh, yeah, and two Honor. Uh, where are the league bases there? there. And then it's back to Badger, who does everything to do. So Mango is yep. next. Right. We so run, this, we just run through it. Yep. It's another yep. league, which I will build boats. Yep, and then I will do the next thing, which is Mango's Diplomatic Chip. Which I don't have any Strategos to commit, because it is contested, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Is there anything else you can do? Oh, I don't. I, yeah, there's nothing else I can do, so that's just dead. Well, it's not neutral, yeah. Bummer. Doesn't matter what order we do it in here. Yep, just rumors. Just rumors. More and rumors. rumors. Okay, that's well, Badger. Thing we go. I feel like we kicked some Spartan butt. Yep. <laughs> okay, turn in unused Stratigos. So I've got two, which amounts to nothing. But Drew. Yep, I've got five, which is an honor. I had three, which is not an honor, as I recall. Nope. Yeah, it's four. Uh, can you get multiple honor turning those in if you have like, yes. eight, for example? Yes. Or 12? Yep. Or... OK. Crazy, but cool. OK, uh, there's no Persian War ongoing, uh, no automatic victory. Uh, did you guys adjust your maintenance budget for your builds? Um, we don't oh, pay for, right, right, right. we don't yep. pay, oh, we pay well, for you get, you get, yeah, you get four, uh, for the base, four that you built, and then you, you, you built add two four to this. Navies. Okay, so we are supporting the league units as well. Yeah, yes. And what, where is the... Oh, it's it's over here. It's main the the maintain column is what. Yeah, that's basically every base can, basically every base can maintain uh, two navies or four armies or some combination thereof. Got it. It's got four support points. Navies cost two. Armies cost one. Um, cool. Did you keep us updated, Badger, for our costs? No, and... I did not. I did not move those. We built this base in two army pieces, yeah. as I recall. Okay. 
Are these pieces really identical in real life? They don't exist in real Those life. Those pieces do not exist in real life. I just I added oh, them to the interesting. Mod. Yeah. Okay. That's why I shrunk them down so they yeah. don't get, we don't mix them up with the actual yeah. victory point one. Right, right. How how is the unit thing tracked in the base game? Uh, or the real, with a, real life game. With your brain or pencil and paper. <laughs> oh, really? Depending, yeah. Geez. Depending on if you depending on if you like the hidden strategy That's so thing weird. So um I'm sure you could use, you know, you get some blank chits, you know, counters. No, yeah, it's there. just I'm surprised that yeah. that's not doesn't have a chit because it's not like that can be uh, hidden info. It's like clearly all on the board. Yeah. Um, huh. So redeployment goes white, blue, yellow, red, and the controlling factions control that stuff. Now, I didn't completely. Why is go it over white, this. blue, yellow, red, by the way? It's just the rule. OK. Um, <laughs> Now, anybody that's not at a base must redeploy, except you can leave one behind. Oh, really? Crap. <laughs> um, now, just because it's white, blue, yellow, red, um, let's say we had a. Let's say we had this situation just because white goes first. Um, doesn't mean they have to go home first. That would just force blue to go home because each side can only have one guy there. But it it's it's adjudicated at the end of the entire uh, redeployment uh, hmm. okay. scheme. Yep. So, but you are also not tied to a base that you are at. So, for example, if this guy wanted to redeploy to Kaios, he could do that. It's just a matter of whether you want to do that or not. So it's it's broadly a reshuffling, but you can only go to bases. Um, you cannot redeploy to a place without a base. So can't go there. Um, no base. And do you have you to follow do you have to follow movement restrictions at all or is it anywhere? No, anywhere? Nope. You can go anywhere at all. No movement restrictions apply. So um, and obviously, you can talk about it with your teammate, but the controlling faction gets to make all the decisions. So, <laughs> um, Badger, is there anything you feel like we need to reinforce? Maybe, do we want to throw a dude up here? A white, a white dude up here? Do we want to maybe ship well, people to the... Thessalia or Korkyra? They have some navies now that they can play with a little bit. Um, but they have to they have to come out through Thessaly or through Athens. So um, if we throw a navy up here, that's sort of, especially if it's an Athenian navy, uh, we could block... Now, what's the restrictions on what who can move to which color bases? Everybody has to go to the same color base, except Athens. Athens can use any friendly base. Uh, but Spartans have... Red has to go to red, yellow to yellow, white to white. Athens is the, the exception. Because they treated their allies like dirt. So, <laughs> that's true. Um, oh... When this base was lost, this treachery comes back. Wasn't that base converted? Yes, it was. Oh, but we didn't. Did we not have a base? We did not have no, a I, base. I removed a base. Yes. It was converted. I think I screwed that up because we don't have any left. Can you not convert if you don't have any left? Isn't it? Yeah, just... you're you're component limited. So Well, but wouldn't it just count as a replace? Or a, like well, yeah, okay. I guess no, it depends on how their replaces no, it's work. Not a like, kill, it's, a, and it's, it's not okay. a kill. One, two. So I moved down to So the base and the and the treachery go back there, right? Yeah. Mm, so now we can move some boats up there. 
Yeah, man, that's that maybe changes things, Garrick. Yeah, I don't feel like we walloped him anymore. No. no, no. Ah, consider us unwalloped. <laughs> I'd almost rather have not built this base and just converted yeah, that one. Yeah, I. It's okay. None of us know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew what I was doing. I just wasn't paying attention to the base situation. I saw this That's base there. I, and I the thought somebody us. had moved. I, I thought Garrick or somebody had replaced. I, uh, I don't know. I think we should block Thessaly from naval movement. I do like the sound of yeah. that. Where do you want to take? In Athens built from you want to take one of the ones from Athens or you're going to take this one in Samos because it's not doing anything right now um yeah and this guy he's league bases can't be subverted which is one of the nice things about league bases so he could move and take that um take that job so is this is this Athens who what's the order of this well yeah you would have to do that after you did all the white stuff but I don't know that we want to necessarily oh right yeah white blue yeah. yeah okay i mean we could we could move a couple delian navies over there too because they're not really in danger of do we want to throw one into boyosha just to make yeah, it annoying well Boyosha. well if they do if they do a military there they're probably going to win the land battle and then they'll take the free naval battle. But at least it makes them do something, I guess. Or alternatively, we could move an army to Korkaira with similar thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I... I think the key thing is to get a navy in Thessaly because that does two things. It blocks their movement and it also um why does that block protection their movement? for the base? Because the um it's the dark blue going across, which means Oh no, it doesn't block yeah, dark blue. Yeah. Dark yeah. blue is land movement, so naval No, naval it's doesn't also block navy. anything out of it. It's it's also navy. Um when the Navy uses this route, you compare it to Navy. Navy always oh. compares to Navy. Yeah, and so we couldn't land. move Navy through there, but we could right. still move land through there. Yes, yeah. Understood. But, yeah, the key is bottling up your Navy. So... Okay, wait, so like, then what's the difference between the two colors again? It's down here on this one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's this whole box at the bottom. Basically, the the lighter blue. Basically, the lighter blue. Any movement across a light blue connection is based on naval strength in the in the box to be exited in the theater to be exited. So nothing can uh, leave Athens on any of yeah, these. Yeah, yeah, because this unless yes. Dark blue they compare to whatever they are. Light blue they compare to navy. They and always then, compare to Navy. Yes, it says there. Navy yeah, always yes. compares to Navy. Yeah. All right, Badger. Well, what do you think? Pull one from Cyclades to Korkyra. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Wouldn't that be Cyclades? Yeah, Garrick. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> We're all ancient Greeks here. <laughs> Um, do we want to move any up to Kalkidiki? Do you want to do anything to Boyosha? I think anything we dump in there is probably going to die. But well, then yeah, go so do, dump some stuff in there. Well, then yeah, on that bring it. on that note, do we want to pull stuff out? Do we want to get this pull him out? I mean, yeah, that's probably not the worst idea in the world. Move him somewhere for. Um, pull him out and maybe you could even put you could even put a couple of navies in here because 
then if you throw two navies in here, they have to win by four to kill the base. They're going to need, you know, one for each, one to kill each navy plus two kill the base. Right, because we couldn't do it with land and land has we to be done do it with, first. Right, yes. Yeah. Do we want to do that then? Makes it annoying. You, you, yeah, if you throw two in there, then you don't even have to worry about Thessaly because they can't. Well, they could two, four. They could move. Yeah, you could throw two in there and one in Thessaly, and then they're. Yeah. What do you think? You want to take one from either Lesbos or Kios? Yeah, yeah they're not doing anything over there. They're, they're, yeah, might as well move them. You want to move both or just one of them? I would throw them both in there. Okay. Make them. Yeah. And you see any other white piece movement you want to do? No, I think that's probably good. Okay. And I think we probably want to do something with this Athenian Navy. Yeah, I figure we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. Which color is up next? Uh, uh blue. Athens. Yep. Blue's up? Okay. Well, yeah, then I guess... Uh, what do you think? Throw it up into Thessalia to be yeah. extra annoying. Um, do you want to move the guy up in Hellespont? We could. Yes, abandon the Hellespont. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you Nothing think for it? In this scenario. <laughs> what do you think for it, Badger? I think maybe put them. I think maybe put them in Amphipolis just in case they try to do something funny. And well, to get to Amphipolis, they have to go through either Chalcidice or Athens, right? Uh, right. Which but means, in theory, yeah. Well, that that means uh, by my logic, we should just reinforce Chalcidice since we have stuff there as well. Yeah. Well. We can move land through there as much as we want. We can move land through there and the navies aren't going to... If you leave That's the fair. navy here, they can't take that base. That's fair. All right. And that, how much does it take? How many hits does it take to destroy a base? Four? Two. Two. Just two. So okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So yellow is up. Um, I think we should move one of these navies up to Boeotia. I don't know why we wouldn't just pile all of them into Boeotia. Because, I mean, then we have to reinforce Corinth with land units a little bit, but uh, because it's land first, they can't actually, they have to win a land battle before they could win with ships. And these two ships aren't going to protect it against their fat navy if they want to do that. So we might as well just concentrate our naval forces in one spot so then we can go places or just okay. smash the crap out of these guys here if we want. Well, we have to move the yellows down basically from there because that's where the only place they can come from. But can't they? Oh, yeah, you're right. We can get this one. Yeah, we're, we shouldn't abandon a base, though. <laughs> right. Well, why not? Um, so much so that that army is locked there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, Um, because I mean, now they could they could come in and basically wipe it out with land units right now. Yeah, they that's... back. They have to at least commit some more forces. That's true. I just figure they're going to win that naval battle anyway. Like if they want to, yeah, but they have to move the units, which means spending strate right. uh, that's strategic. True. That's true. Yep. And splitting up their big navy potentially. Yeah, that's fair. That being said, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to move this one back here too. That's also fair. Yep. Yeah. Um, and let's see. For Sparta, one of these in Thessalia has to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we might as well send him back to Sparta, and then we'll leave the other. Uh, so do we even want to leave this guy there? And. But for that matter, do we want to leave that guy there? Because <laughs> if they manage to get the... Well, this one is safe 
because they would have to do two military actions, one to move, then one to fight. Right. Plus, yeah, this but is... If they get the jump on us here, they actually could kill that Spartan off, which is not great. So yeah. maybe we should put him back, too. Because we can always march back in if we want. True. Yep, I'm okay with it. And the 300 can sit in there, too, and it's essentially <laughs> free for them to move up there, right? Because they can use their own... Yes. Strategos to move? Yep. Yes. So does it count as a committee? Could we commit five and then also use the 300 yes, to get a six? Yes. Yeah, okay. that's a... Yeah. Yep. So okay. you could move... Yeah. You could essentially move six. One guy could move six by committing five plus the 300 with no help from... with no help from his compatriot. Okay. And yeah, I believe that's it. Yep. All right. So that is the end of the turn. There was no will over the assembly. Um, so you have to reset the strategy board. Everybody gets, there's a bigger stock of strategos this time. Well, don't we draw Aristophanes? He might change yeah, that, right? Yeah, we're just, yep. Yeah. Okay. So it, yeah, you could... Is there anything that needs to happen before we draw out of here? What was that, Drew? Is there anything that happens needs to happen before we draw Aristophanes? Nope. Or is that the first thing that happens in Portland? All right, that's okay. the first thing that happens. Yep. Yeah, let's just do it then. Knights C. So we place the league issue on Athenian opposition one. Uh, we we and, get a free military. Yep. And if, I promise I won't take this one away from you. <laughs> each each opposition faction immediately receives two strategos. Oh, I'll take it. No will of the assembly to screw with things. So that's kind of too bad. <laughs> I know. I kind of wanted to see that mechanic yep. hit you guys, even though it wouldn't do anything for us, but. All right. Okay, okay. So everybody's got their entourage from last time, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can take your faction leader into your hand. Uh, faction leader. Uh, and then you can decide on any of your entourage cards to keep, and you discard the rest. Oh, uh, Mango, we should unteam. Yeah, I was about to say, we probably want to unteam for I can a moment. See yeah. hand, we can see Oops. hands. Or you can, can do just that. do the old fashioned peak thing. That's true. I'm on no team. <laughs> okay, so we take the we take the whole entourage back and then also draw from the deck, right? Uh, yes, you'll take your entourage, whichever cards you want, into your hand, and then you draw up to the hand size. So if you keep one, you would draw eight. If you dump them all, you would draw nine. Oh, that's right. You no. Know, if and you then... keep three, you draw six. Does the when does the de deck get reshuffled? Uh right after we do the discards. Okay, so I've discarded my entourage I don't want. So I put the discard back in the back in the deck now. Right, Badger? Yeah, yeah. Anything. Once everything is. Oops. I'm Wait, gonna hang, hang on. on. I'm going to put one. these back in, too. All right. All right. We ready to draw, we Badger? Should have, we should have nine cards plus our leader, right? Yes. Yes. Cool. So if you. Yeah. Is this garbage card in here?
All right, I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I'm set. So then the... There are no hostages, so that's not in effect. So now the controlling faction in each city picks one unit or one uh, issue and puts it on the two space on their side of the track. Um... Did we really end up only one difference in honor? Yep. Uh, like maybe two. Looks like. Mm, yeah, is this on the 15 and 16? We should count ours 29. and it should tell us. Oh, uh, we should have 20. We're at 12 we and 13 to 25. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that makes more sense. A little higher. There we go. Is that including the correction badger for not converting the space? Yes. Yeah, I moved mine. Down, okay. So, yeah. Uh, I chose my issue. Uh, okay. As did I. <laughs> Great minds think alike, right, Mango? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Selfish ones, anyway. Well, I represent <laughs> Athens, so it's it it's a given that I'm a great mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other faction chooses another level one. Yes. Yep, yeah. They put it on. Yep. And then the. Controller chooses three to the middle, and yep. the opposition chooses two. Yep. Okay. What you gonna pick, Drew? That is a good question. Uh. Two. Uh, um. I'll just pick a military. Three. We'll go for that. Yeah. I'll pick military, league, and league. League? No, I guess you're right. I'll pick a second military. One league. Um... I don't Let's see. Know. What do we? How do we? How do we actually catch up here? There's there's honor gain in battle, right? And it's how many uh, units you kill, right? Yeah. Kill. yeah, it's the it's the military value of the units you kill. So like killing a, a base okay. gives us two. That's right. It's, yeah. No, it's just per piece. It's, oh, it's just per it's piece. Just per piece. Yep. Oh, but it's but the the, get, the commander gets more. The commander gets two per piece. The commander guy gets, gets two. One per piece. The not commander gets one. Yeah. That's right. Oh, so each so. piece is is worth three, three honor really? for the for the for state the, victory. For the state. Yeah. Yep. And interesting. And the other side loses two per piece because each. Oh, so each, each one's worth five. Loses. So basically, it's a swing of five. Oh, okay. So that seems like the main way to actually win during war. Oh, uh, imagine warring is the is the object of a war game. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's shot. just those are those are so much bigger because they're swings instead of just gains. So yeah, okay. So what you're saying is y'all want to declare peace. So what I'm saying is I think I'm gonna pick a go gay. Oh, is there anywhere where we can just go kick their ass on land? No, they have boats everywhere. That's annoying. God, playing to their strengths. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> so I guess the question is, do we really need three more Spartans with a go gay, or should we just... I mean... It's not too late to declare I'm peace. I'm only gonna... I'm gonna do... Hey, go ahead, I'm Garrick. <laughs> Yeah, spend oh, that's time. Right. Doing we, that. we both have to do it, don't we? Yeah. And actually, it is too late because you did not pick the warpy style. So get out of here. 
Um, Badger could have picked it. All right. Well, we have two military guaranteed. Probably some more. Cryptea, not really useful. Diplomacy. I haven't really built up the treachery to make diplomacy worth it anywhere. They haven't left any naked bases. Yeah, I didn't oh, have be, any strategic It'll be worth left. more to you than it was to me because I screwed up. But... Uh, league. Yeah, every, everything's weird because it's like this is such a short scenario. Yeah, <laughs> so there's like a lot of yes build up that was obviously missing. Yeah, I feel like we just should take all military. Well, and and uh, and the and the long term, you don't make any moves for the long term. You know, yeah, you just exactly. Um, beyond what, what beyond be, just the building. What would be really funny is ostracism. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Uh no, but that but even if I ostracize and I succeed, which is probably a long shot, then we still lose because we're behind. So yeah, I think I just pick two military and we just go all in on that. Unless you think I should do another like a second league mango. I mean a second league could be useful because we can recruit More with them and they yeah. Point. We just potentially could do that. That's not what I wanted to do. Weird lag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, shoot. Wait. What else can we do with league? I forget already. We can also convert okay, a yeah. base. No, league. League, league is worth it. Honor gains is nice. Just build yeah. some bases. <laughs> we need units. <laughs> All right. Is it time to vote? It's yes. Time to it is. Vote. All right. So the leader does the first pick, yes? Yep. All right, we'll start off with a military. As will I. Actually, no. We're going to start off with a league. Ready, Badger? Yep. All right. Uh, I have a strength of seven to your five. So it's strength two, and I get three strategoi. And I get two. Mm. You saw I, ch I changed it to the league, not the military. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. I will also go military. Um, ready? Yep. Uh, I have seven to your five. Yep. This is not good. All right, take a mango, sorry. <laughs> so you get two no when I get one. Yeah. Uh, I have seven. It's for the good of the country, Badger. I have yes. six, so one in your direction. I was okay. going to put ostracism out there just for purposes of the stream, but I didn't do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll I go ahead pick. and vote on a league. Uh. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. Let's do a military. Ready? Yep. All right. Uh, we both have a strength of five. It looks like so it doesn't move. Does it move? And then I'm getting three, and you're getting yep. six. So it moves one. I get two strategically. Uh, 
I will go with. Uh, uh, did you? You did move it. Okay, cool. Oh, I moved a military. I didn't move the one I put it on, but yeah, same thing. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. 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 I we'll will go with the other last league. military there. Okay. Four for me. Ready? You have seven, yep. so it moves three spaces. Oh boy. Uh, we both have five. Category. It's that way. Yep. Uh, oh, we're getting our we're getting our strategy out. I guess that's something. Uh, um, military. You have four cards left, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oops. Uh, I guess I'll vote on a league. And... Okay. Vote with this. Six. Seven. I have five. Oh, that's a diplomatic suite. Okay, yeah, so I'll take that one. I get two strategoi. <sighs> Come on. What? Throw it for the country, Badger. For the city state. Ready? We'll go with this military. Nice. Very nice. So you get two and I get nothing. Uh, mango. And we bumped I know again. what you just played. Yeah. And I can't let you do it. Oh, whoopsie. So this is going to be bad for Sparta. <laughs> I we're mean, not, that's we're not now, now that's, now that's on either. you. No, that is on you. How's it on me? Because <laughs> you played it first. <laughs> yeah, we got problems oh, you did up it. here. Hey! Oh, wait. Dang it, we're still tied. <laughs> um, uh, it's oh, my wow. go to vote, right? Well, so you better, right. better get the last one. same one again, so we have a chance of moving it. Oh wait, you can you can add you can add one of your. That's one, right. I'm totally gonna add yeah. one of my entourage. It's just random, um, right, Badger? Yeah. Yes. Um. What do I want to do? One. <laughs> so you get to move it one in your direction. One space in my direction. Yeah. We'll right. do now military. Wait, are you? Are you sure you didn't do the last card? I have two cards still. You you have your leader and your yeah, and I voted yeah, so, first. Yeah, so... I've got the last one because you you did the first one, so you've got the odds. I've got the evens. Let me think. I don't know if I want to do military. Uh, I have five. Tier. So it only moves one. So it moves one. No, that's what I'm saying. Shouldn't I vote now? Because shouldn't I run out of cards first? All right. And oh, no, I'm thinking about it wrong. Like it. I'm thinking about it wrong. Yep. 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 And I have the. Uh... Oh, no, we totally screwed ourselves. I'm going to go league. Why did I get so many of the military pieces? <laughs> We're so effed. <laughs> um, I will take one. All right. The remaining pile. I did my leader. So you've got five and I've got four. Yeah. So you win that one. And I get one Stratego. Yay. Okay, so you have to give me one of yours, I think. We'll yes. Well, so, I think it it's still Do I get any for mine? Shit. I'm trying to Nope. No, strategy board no, because... got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or wait, 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 wait. Put it back. Yeah, Put it, it back. Was... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Mango, keep them where they are because we got to count. It's not oh, ostracism, yeah. that correct? Still. Yes. And you are the controlling tied, faction. But... Ah, yeah. So, yes, you yep, get one. one yep. five. Yeah, yeah. We have five and five. So, no honor loss gain for us. So, Garrett uh, is going you to become... gain three. But, uh, that's right. I become the controlling faction. Keep the controlling and faction I and gain one for this. Yep. So it's a I think that matters. Plus four, minus four. <laughs> It matters for um, if we get raided, you lose your uh, strategic guide instead of me. Plus four, uh, you said? True. That's going to be really bad. Yep. 
So 22. Oh, shoot. You know what? Wait, hang on. I played. Where was that card? 22 and 7 is 29. Yep. I was in suit for my. Oof. They got more chips than us, Badger. This is going to be bad. Yeah. Yes, I know. Crap. Where did the. I know. Is this still out there? Uh... Oh, wow. They got not very many chits at all. Three military. Two yeah, we kept basically. matching each other on votes. That's what happened to us last round. Yeah. I think, we lost, I think it happened to us twice, three yep. times. Yeah, we Before lost time. two chits from uh, that. That is so weird. Where is the card that I played? The Oracle card. You also get your two. Yeah, I was just. Whoop, whoopsie. Yeah. I was just pulling it straight to my uh, hidden zone. One, yep. Two, and then you get to give me one place. You have seven, so you have to give me one of yours. Yep. Um, can I give you a rumors? Yes, you can. Or any of the no games. You might want to give me a military just to spread them out. Yeah, I agree. You'll still get most of the honor from the battles because you'll be the commander. I'm all in on second place here, Derek, so. (laughs) (laughs) See, I like I like games where I can I can still win even though I lose. (laughs) This is one of them. And let me get back on the then right. Then we have to do the strategy board. Yep. So, so you will gain one. Oh, shit, I keep doing that. Because you've got a non leader card. Yep. And you're and getting two? I'm four. Assuming. Four? Oh, nice. Four. Oh, yeah. Yours says four. That's way better than mine. Yeah, they're both four. I think on both sides, they're four and two, and it's both pre-plague. Yeah, mine's mine's on post, which yeah. I hadn't really looked at, but that's why I, I'm envious of yours. All right. Wow, so, we got all of our strategy. Yep. So we have three. We have an advantage of three on them. So, honor order. Um, where are the rumors? Mango. Oh, I already gave them to you. Oh, you did. Duh. <laughs> Oh, man, so that's Derek gonna is bother one. Me. Oh, well. Drew is two. Okay, honor order has been determined. Are y'all ready for the uh, chip phase? I believe so. I mean, I'm sure, you know, we'll have plenty to discuss. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Back to a half hour of silence. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess, Badger, what's our plan for this round? Since this is the end. I don't know. You don't know? Stupid millipedes. They have five military. Yeah, I know. So how do we handle that?
run away, run away. <laughs> um, What's the final scoring like? Is there any thing? No, there is. Okay. There is no. There is nothing. It's just. So we just need to make sure Athens has more honor than Sparta coming out of this yes. theater phase. Oh, boy. Yes. Oh, boy. Which means not getting people killed. Yeah. What's the best way to do that? Oof. Needed more military. Um, Badger, when you do a military action to move, that just moves. It doesn't fight as well, no, right? It it fights also. You, oh, really? Yeah. Uh... Um. Yeah. You you can do. You can do all three things in theory if you had one uh, in Sparta, but um, yeah. So if 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 okay, if so yeah, you, one here, you can yeah. do the move step before the battle. Yes. Before the battle, and yeah. the the strategoid that you commit during the move step also count for the battle. Yes. Yes. Uh, so um, the only time you can't yeah, right, the only you time you can't move is when you do a raid. So your guys basically uh, right, have to right. be that pre-positioned for the raid. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this started. I'll drop a chit in Boyosha, and I'm just going to throw it like above it since it's crowded in there. Uh, am I next? Yes, I am. Okay. What on earth? <laughs> yeah, the like. I don't know what to call it. The hitbox, I guess, is really big on these pieces. <laughs> you might want to multi-select them and then just push one, and then that will get close enough to their correct hitbox. No, no. This is this is my masterpiece. You're ruining it. <laughs> oh, even worse, Garrick. That's so terrible. That's not me. That's Mango. <laughs> oh. I put a stop to that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes that makes the uh, somehow makes the game state like even more obtuse to read. We're just going to convert all the pieces mid game right now. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> technically mid game. Um... Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, the, clearly this scenario is why <laughs> they're wooden pieces instead of minis. Uh, 
Um, also, you know, it's by GMT, who never done minis in their life. True. Um, yeah, let's do this. So next up is Mango. Okay, so to do, do, do. Uh, Badger's up, I think. Oh yes. Yeah, Sorry, we're insane. We were just typing. Okay, cool. All good. That doesn't mean he knew it was his turn, but we were typing. Gerard Butler obviously stays. <laughs> that goes without saying. I wasn't. I wasn't doing anything there. Don't you touch that Gerard Butler. <laughs> so Garrick's up again. Yep. What happened? Where'd Badger go? Ah, got it. In Chalkadike. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. I'm gonna put that there. Where? Sparta. Sparta. You think so, huh? No, I mean, I definitely put it in Sparta. I know that. <laughs> I mean, that's what you think. <laughs> 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 All right. Um we'll go to Thessalia Mango. Oh, sorry. That was muted. We played in Sparta. Okay. The Royal We, Royal Mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Mango Jr is playing Pericles already. He's a very advanced child. <laughs> All right, on to Badger. Badger went into Thessalia, so it's back to uh, Garrick. Yep. Um... Sorry, where did you play, Drew? Uh, I haven't played yet. It's Garrick. Garrick, did you go? Not yet. Okay. Oh, you mean where did I play last time? Where did I play last time? Oh, I went uh, to Thessalia. Okay. I think, yeah. Yeah, and then Badger put that one on top of mine. All right, I'll drop this on Athens. Okay. I feel like the uh, the treachery game in a two turn game is a little tricky to play as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's in agreement. <laughs> Everyone say yeah. Okay, Mango, you're up. I, um, I didn't want to be left hmm. out. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard typing all of this. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, I dropped in Boatia. Badger's up. Bo Boatia. Boatia? Boyo. Boyosha. <laughs> Boyosha. I don't know. That doesn't seem right either. <laughs> I'll join that party. Eric? Is the, uh, is the are the backs of these supposed to be like open knowledge? Like well, the they're all them. The... So like like could I go down and look at like see what the order of these yeah, is? Yeah, I I I think that's okay. Yeah. Oh my Whoa, god! What just happened? <laughs> that was really scary. What did you load? I was I was I meant to do um to do explode on the a counterattack stack exploder. And I actually loaded the mod instead. <laughs> <laughs> good, the good thing they really they really did improve the rewind on this though. They did improve the rewind. It looks like we don't even need a rewind. Everything seems the same. No, but that we rewinded rewound back to here. That's how we got here. Oh, okay. How did I we was, get here? I was very frozen <laughs> while all that happened. Got it. All I saw was a spinny wheel and then back to where we were. <laughs> okay, crisis. Who's really... up again? I'll stop me. touching things. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to throw it's not me. a shit in Kalkitiki. Now you're up. Uh, I think I was... Um... I think oh, it was to me. Gary. Oh, I'm sorry. It rewound because I've got three. Yeah, you're right. Got, yeah. So that's where I went. Yeah. Or no, I went to. Yeah, you went to. Yeah, Boyosha. you went there. there. Yep. So then I'll go ahead and go up to there. Now things are making more sense. <laughs> um. I'll go here in Boyosha and Mango's up. Yep, I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I think we are going to. We're going to play in Thessalia. Uh, wait, hang on. Yeah, it's obviously the Salia. <laughs> they just had a typographical error and missed the space. OK, so. Um... In Corinth. In Corinth we play. Yep, cool. Uh, Badger. On, yep, on to Badger. Yeah, I'm down if you want to do that, Badger. I'm not down. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Garrick, you should, you should take the uh, video on demand and just <laughs> chop it in half. 
you could probably kill like at least half of the video length just yeah. from <laughs> deleting sections yes. like this. Um... <laughs> I'll consider it. Not it's I'm not I'm not saying it's okay, Bastro, I'm not trying to tell you to hurry up. No, no, no. Because we've all been doing it. But it just would be funny if you uploaded this and it's like twenty minutes of silence. <laughs> <laughs> when do I skip forward? And then leave me saying that in so everyone's confused. What do you mean silence? <laughs> There's no silence. <laughs> there were only jokes the whole time. <laughs> that was the tightest 20 minutes of Pericles I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> just everything's four times speed. I, I cut it with uh, uh, just like <laughs> hyper frenetic. <laughs> Guy Ritchie is going to direct this uh, cut. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Badger? Uh, he placed in uh, Cyclades? Cyclades? Yep. Yeah, but Where I mean... Where did Badger place? He, he placed in Cyclades. Oh. Cyclades! Oh, okay. So now you're up. Oh, I see. You're not asking for your... Yes. Yeah, I'm asking what he thinks I should do. Because we've been I chatting think. it and we've not come to a decision. I could be annoying and block Sparta or Boyosha. Badger doesn't know, so I'm going to go with that and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I will go to Thessalia. Are you out, Drew, or you have one left? Or? Um, you know, it's a good question. Drew? Where's your pen and paper, Garrick? Drew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one left. How many do you have left? I just have one. I, okay. That's what I thought. I thought you guys had. And Garrick also has one. I'm out. Garrick is out. Yes. Yeah, he he went first, so he's done. So. Okay, so there's only one more for them to place. Yeah, that seems like the right one. Just the question is. Yeah, where do you think? I'm thinking probably up, up north. Yeah, I was just going to say Calca DK. Seems smart. It's called Up North. <laughs> up Yonder. All right. Um, Badger. Uh, hmm. Okay, so Mango. Now that we're Garrick, you have none now, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. So maybe both of them in Boyosha? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Okay. That's all the chips. Okay, Garrick's up. Uh, what do you think, Badger? This one? Do it. Let's do it. All right. Military in Corinth. So, battle or raid? That one's you yours. You can't raid there because it's not contested. Right. So, it's going to yeah, be a battle. Yeah, it's got to be a battle. Yep. So, everybody gets to dump. Stratego's. Um, so. Well, wait, wait, you guys have to bins, commit all... a number first to march in, right? Yes. I mean, everybody, everybody secretly commits at the same time. Everybody secretly commits at the same time. Oh, and then you guys we don't, don't see. Right. Okay. Can until... we discuss? I'm assuming we can discuss yes. this. 
Yeah. yeah. What are you thinking? Um, Oops. Who's doing the battle? Oh, yeah. Who's the leader? Badger is in charge. Okay, I think I've got my bid. If you agree... Wait, what are you going to bid? Um... Oh, there's a plus button just to the lower right of it. Oh, yeah, okay. They're little yeah. tiny buttons. Yep. Um, okay. Okay, wait, let me think about this. Because actually, what are what are the limits anyway? They can bring... Five and then Wait, it's only the it's so only the Badger leaders. can do only do five and then either of us can do zero to four. Yes. Interesting. And Garrick can also do zero to four. And then I can I basically and you guys move can move up, up to five, right? I can move up to five plus whatever Garrick. Oh, Garrick's unit Garrick's units count for yes. movement too. That yep. changes things. Uh, oh interesting. <laughs> oh man, this is so good. <laughs> yes, this is good. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> the game, I mean, this is all bad. This is bad. <laughs> hmm. I must conclude that I cannot drink the wine in front of you. Oh wait, Garrick hasn't seen Princess Bride. I have uh, two seen Princess Bride. What are you talking about? There was this has been like a thing. I've made at least three Princess Bride references, and you were like, "What?" Right, like I don't have the movie memorized. I've seen it like twice <laughs> in my life. I think it's fine. I, I, I've seen it. <laughs> That's embarrassing, Garrick. What's embarrassing is you can't even remember what you're trying to rag on me for. Um, I'm ragging on you for not recognizing Princess Bride references. Mm, a moment and ago, my, it was ragging on you for not seeing just, it. <laughs> yeah, my headcanon is that's because you haven't even seen it. All right, I think we're good. Okay. Everyone ready to reveal? Yep. yep. Flipper dip. Are you really doing this one by one, Badger? <laughs> you say you guys maxed it out, huh? That's one too many, yep. isn't it? Do ours just uh, go straight to the pool? Oops. They'll all go to the pool when they're. I'm when saying, they're... but ours have no ours have no need for being referenced. Don't they contribute battle strength? Yes, they contribute battle strength. You don't yeah, have to so reveal yours yet, though. Oh, that's right. Oh. That's right. Defense doesn't do it yet. I forgot about that. Yep. Rip. So, um, it doesn't change anything. Now we I went can all move in. up to nine, nine guys. So, this one will move. Three, that's one. This one will move. That's two. This one will move. That's three. That's four. Five, six. Do we want to draw any from up here, Badger, since they didn't commit anything to there? Uh, I 
Yeah, let's take let's take these two guys. Five. Six. And then seven, eight, and nine. Well, that just seems excessive. You guys compensating for something? <laughs> so the first battle is a land battle. And Athens has six. And nine is fifteen. And then we yep, have, so we one, have a strength two, of seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So Garrett can throw in the state ship if he wants to. That's his choice. Uh what do you think, Badger? Does it sound like a good idea? Well, if you throw it in, then the then it'll be a margin of four, right? Yeah. So the only way we can we can't lose if we can only draw, and that's if we do a one and they do a five. So I would throw it in. Okay. I thought so too. All right. And then we draw a card. Oh, God, this deck is really whack. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not supposed to reshuffle the discard yet, right? I don't no, believe so. Be... Yeah. Cool. Five. That worked out well. Five. <laughs> so no change. So we win by four. four. So we can inflict four hits, which is just these three guys. And there's nothing left over for the um there's nothing left over for the bases. So your three guys then will kill. Uh, one of these, you get to pick whether it's Athenian or the other. This is all the Athenian's fault. Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but Athenian's is fine. <laughs> so then uh, there are... You guys each lose three because there was one. And then I will gain six. Oh, yeah, and Sparta goes down by six, right? Yep. And Garrett gains three, and then it's a formality two, because three. there's no next turn, but this would go on the two space over there because it's a major defeat. Um, so now... Wait, sorry, what just one... happened with the... Whenever a city loses more than five combined honor in a single battle... Mm-hmm. The war and peace issue goes on the opposition to space. Oh, Basically, they're saying, cool. you guys okay. screwed this up. We're going to hit you over the head with this. Um, not that you necessarily want peace, but right. that's too, you know, that's too oration honor for you. Um, OK, so now there's an optional sea battle and. Hell yeah, we'll fight this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Athens has two, four, six. Uh, we have ten. And, and uh, we also get this. That's seven and nine and sixteen. So that's a difference. So of sixteen. Nine 16 before the card. To 10? Or is, is it to 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6. 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 10. Okay. Base is so, so. so it's a difference of 6? Yeah. Okay, so we... We drew 4. Doesn't matter, because there's no 6s in the deck, are there? <laughs> we drew a 2. So that's 4 hits. So... There's one hit. 
and three hits. So that's yeah. then not four enough to honor. Kill the last space. Four honor for one, two, three. Four honor for me, two honor for Derek. Thank you. And six for the city. Do we Can lose we honor for that? By two each, right? You each lose two. Yep. And the city loses four. Yep. Mm, dire straits for the Spartans. <laughs> All right, and then that's the entirety of the military, right? So all of our strata goi yep. head yep. back. Ooh. Well, not quite as crushing as we wanted, but that is still a good fight. Yep, and then this is used up for the yep. turn. Yep, But it was worth it. Hmm. I mean, I think. Oh, these two are dead. I think you should go to Boeisha, maybe. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking as well. Hmm. Yeah, park three Spartans in Corinth before we can start moving through there. <laughs> um, that was as much the plan as anything in case the battle didn't work out. At least it was plugging the... Putting the cork in the bottle. Yeah, because if this was a military issue, you guys would have flipped that over and brought everybody in there and... Completely destroyed. That was our whole plan. Was that fight right there? <laughs> that was our only plan. We were, yeah, I know. I, we were I terrified can... of your number of issues. I don't know if you really needed to be that terrified because we have so few strategy to work with. Um, I think probably this one actually, Mango, just to. Because mm. I don't know that either of these we really care about, and it forces them to flip both because that's their only stack at that point. I. Well. Oh, wait, no, hang on. I'm next, then you're next. So actually, we'd have to do two things in a row, but still. Uh... But yeah, we can do we can do Boeisha. We can do this and then Boeisha, and that's fine. But if you do this first, we can throw some units in there to um, make it easier to move through. Exactly. So, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, yeah, we'll flip this. It's a league. Oh, that, that would have been so good if we could have wiped. Um, yeah. that's yeah. you. We knew it would take. We knew we had to commit very little for to make sure that like probably wouldn't happen. <laughs> we needed a better second battle card. Yeah, that two killed us. Do you want to put two two uh, landing? Yeah, just them? two infantry is. Um, what we want, I think, because yeah, like, oh, that was that was ships, mine, yeah. the ships don't block through yeah. here, right? right? Correct. Okay, yeah. So now we only have to park a single Spartan unit there. No, and then two else Spartan can units go somewhere else. Oh no, because no, the base is worth two. Right. So if we want to get Sparta out and go somewhere, we only need to leave one behind. So that's only one Stratagoid or Stratagos that's lost uselessly. Okay, so I think Boeisha. Um. Oh wait, uh, didn't you guys lose? Not that it matters. Didn't you guys lose a ship too on counterattack? Oh yeah. No, because you're. It takes two. I thought. Kill. I thought you said ships will go one. Oh yeah, yeah. You're. Yeah, we Athenian have. We're Athenian, Athenian ships. ships. Yep. 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 Cool. All right. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay, so it's a military. Yeah, yep. so, so I guess the only question here is, do we go in or do we raid? I think we go in. We don't give them a chance to move those out. Because uh, they, could, they, could they could withdraw them back, back here where we can't touch them. 
That's a good point. We need okay. to kill some units. Yeah, let's send in the Spartans. No. <laughs> Although I think you might want to send in like one Spartan. <laughs> Just because, like, we we're a little limited in this pool. Yeah, but well, okay. So max they can put in is eight Stratagos, and they probably are just going to do the max. So oh, that's true. Um Okay, well let, let's just math this out. So they're they're probably gonna put in eight. They're probably putting in the max, which means they have strength uh to eleven. And we currently have strength, what's that, four, five, six, seven on lands. So if we bring in two Spartans, we'll be tying them after they max out their stratagoy, assuming they choose to do that. Mm -hmm. And for the ships, well, for the ships, we have four to there. We what can't we bring any ships in anyway, really. So it's just going to be two bases. I know, but the stratagoy strat we commit will add to that and help to potentially. You oh, know. yeah, that's true. That's true. OK, so, so bases, we have eight ships to their four uh hmm. hmm okay yeah that's uh let's just do it that's fine <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so we're doing the military got to find out how much to commit yep yep all right so we'll reveal we reveal oh. ours now Sorry, we yeah, were for... doing the military the whole time. We were just discussing what to do or how much to do. Oh, yeah, I already flipped it. Yeah, Bad Badger and I were discussing it a little bit. Let me just uh, confirm. You've Perfect. got, yeah. I see what you've got. You see what I've got? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, yeah, I think that's the play. Okay. We'll go with it. Okay. So we have a total of seven. Uh, yeah, thank you. And so then we do our we do our movement. Yep. Yep. Right. OK, so do, 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 do. we are going to move a Spartan here has to stop. Then we move a Spartan here. Um, I think we should bring this guy from here. Yeah. So that's three movements now. <laughs> uh... And we should definitely bring the 300. <laughs> oh, of course. And I think that's probably it. I think we want to leave something behind in Sparta. They do have, I mean, it's probably useless rumor, but they have a chit down there. Useless rumors. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, let's see. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's 12 strength in Sparta. Yeah, and if they like put a boatload of. Stratagoy behind it. That's probably fine. 
we're going to win the land battle anyway. So really, it's just yeah, for sure. The three hundred's useful for the extra Stratagoy point in the sea battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm fine uh, with so this. That's fine. All right. Well, hang on, hang on. Though Spartans do more hits, right? Or Spartans can take. Yeah, more they, hits. they, they can both. They. Do we one want Spartan, another one up there from Yeah, later? one Spartan can kill two, and it takes two hits to kill a Spartan. Yeah, well, but guess... the land battle at best can kill one single uh, army. Yes. Yeah. army. Yes. yeah, no, I oh, guess. Can yeah, we have the Spartan soak your counterattack and just have it do nothing? Like, this guy's going to die. He's going to do one hit. Oh, wait, no, right. he does half a hit. Let's say there were two. He does, yes. This this guy is not going to do anything. He's just going to. But in the, in the event that there were two of these guys and they do one hit back. Can we have that hit target a Spartan so it does nothing? No, the, or do we have the, to lose. Yeah, the the whoever owns the units gets to assign the hits. Assign the basically. hits. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Okay. Anyway, I think yeah, we're done moving. All right, time to reveal. And also, you you also you are required to um. You're you're required to inflict casualties. You're not necessarily required to kill the most blocks but you have to you you can't because especially in naval combat which is bloodier than land combat you could say well i'm not going to do it and because you want to save your guys and you can't you can't do that so oh um, i see yeah yep okay flip ours we got nothing okay <laughs> <laughs> So we do the land battle. Flip card. It'll be a walk over. So. Yeah, it almost doesn't matter, but we got to draw yep. a card just to burn it. Yep. Yep. Uh, we okay. drew a one. So you lose a cube. We lose a cube. So. So that's what. An honor for me and two? two honor for. Yep. Bingo. Yep. And three and... for. Yeah, Team and then Garrick and I each lose one, and the city loses two. All right. And then the naval. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same deal. Two, yeah, four, deal five, six, card. seven, and six is 13, or nine is 13, whatever you got. I drew Plus a two. the 300. Yep. So how many? Yeah, we better count just to make sure. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixteen, sixteen to four, six, so ten hits. Yeah, that's more than enough. And we just drew a five. So yeah. yeah so, so we get two for the base and one for each of these? No, no. just one for the base. Yep. Yeah, so well, yeah. So the commander will get six. And you got and three. I got my three. three. Yep. And then so we get nine. Eric and I each lose three. Two, so that puts us at. Three. Yeah, there you go. 27. And the city loses six. And this would go here to the extent that it matters. Yeah, the component limits matter at this point. <laughs> yep. Well, I guess they might. For some of these, actually. And that's that, right? And that's that. Yep. Yep. So back to Badger. And then Garrick. Uh, so which one, Garrick? These two. This one? I don't think it matters. <laughs> I don't think it matters. I will spend two to convert that to an Athenian base. So that's two for the city. For me. And then uh, on my turn, I'll flip the League in Athens, convert this base. It's 
spending two. And you took care of all the honor for me, Badger? Yep, I got it. Cool, cool. I'm done. Okay, back to me. Um... Hmm. Hmm. True. All right, yeah, so I guess we'll go for Phasalia. It is a military. Um. Hmm, okay, so we got to think about this again, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, like so. All right, you guys have your numbers ready? No, you don't. All right. We have submitted our bets. Um, we are slightly rethinking. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Yeah, I think so. OK. Let's All right, it. yeah, we'll stick with it. OK. So okay. eight total. Okay, so oh, why? There we go. So four ships show up. Um stupid blue boat. Uh the three hundred go for free. Yeah, for free, yep. So then we have four more moves. I don't know, do we take two from here and two Spartans from Sparta? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds okay. Okay. Oh, Spartans Oops. definitely coming. Are you taking that one from? I... Yeah, I guess we could Think about that. Definitely two Spartans are coming all the way up. So I always still leave the Spartan, Spartan behind there. Yeah, and, that seems yeah, moved out instead. Because then that, what does that give us? We have four, five, six, seven. Seven. Plus nine uh, Stratagoy, because 300. So that's 16. Yeah, I already, I already counted the Stratagoy. Seven with the Stratagoy versus their four. So assuming they maxed out at eight, we'll be up by four. Uh, I don't know. I no wait, we'll be up by three actually. Assuming they maxed at eight, we'll be up by three. Uh, I mean, they might have gone way less. We'll see. Yeah, we'll um, see. But I mean, yeah. but that makes me think maybe we should bring the Spartan just to be up by four. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. OK, what you guys got? Yeah, they max. OK, cool. Yep. Oh, we, we yep. didn't we didn't count the Spartan treachery when we were doing hits in Boyacho, did we? Does Not that, that it matters. Does that even do hits? Yes, it has a combat strength. Oh, really? Up at the top. Yeah, in the power. yeah, the treachery. Yeah, the treachery. It, it doesn't it adds it adds military value, but it doesn't. It doesn't do hits. Sorry, right. yeah, it, it doesn't. It adds, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that wouldn't have mattered because we, they didn't bring yeah, anything. Yeah, it was a, but, it was a. Uh, that's good to know. 
So two, four, six, seven. Yeah, so we're basically up on U by four during the land battle. Yeah, because our, our strategy all cancel out, essentially. Yep. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, ten, two, one, two, four. So you're up by six. Yep. So, yep, we'll draw. And we got a one. We got a five. <laughs> we got a five. <laughs> Shit. It's okay. We still got it. So, Did they're, we? so uh, they we're up by five. No, I think we're up no, by we, four. We're, we're up by six. six. And now you're up by two. So you, oh, you have okay, one, great. two, three. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah, so 10 cool. to their four. So, so we're at, at 11 kill to the two nine, units. so we get two, two hits. Yeah. So, Dang, yeah, we get rid of the army. Really close. <laughs> yep. And then we get rid of... Yeah, you one. take out that guy. So Eric and I each lose two, and the city loses four. Yep. Um, two. I get four... And the city gets six. Mm -hmm. Okay, naval battle. We really needed that five that, for the naval battle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hopefully that saves our butt. Uh, okay, so we're only up on two. Oh no, wait. Uh, three hundred counts right. at sea, so we're up by three on the, the naval battle. The cancel out. So yep. you have one, so you two, two, have three, four, two... five. Oh wait, no, no, no. Four. I forgot the navy. Yeah. So you're up by one. We are up by one. Bummer. Ugh. All right. Um, All right. It's a three. You can draw it, Derek. Sure. <laughs> random is random. It's a five. Uh, <laughs> so we draw, right? Yeah, you guys got a three. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a draw. So. Bummer. Okay, that's uh, it for that. And then next is Mango. Yep. Uh, okay. So do we want to... Well... I could draw Athens, which would force their hand to draw the Salia. Yeah, that's probably best. Yeah. So I will draw Athens, which is Rumors. Yep. The Fleetwood Mac album. So I draw this, which is rumors. Hey. Hey. So Derek, Derek uh, gets skipped. Yep, I get nothing to do. Okay, so um, back to me. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's our move. I mean, I guess we can wait, but like we only. <laughs> uh... Oh, shoot. I don't think it matter. It does. It might matter. Uh, we could have brought this guy from Macedonia down into Thessalia. So we should have left one in probably Sparta. Mm hmm. Yeah, we uh... just totally, we totally ignored that. that we totally guy ignored there. him. Well. Yeah, we oh, might have been gosh, able to get that fort out of there. Do next. Oh yeah, actually that's true. We should have left one of those guys. Because we would have had all Spartans. Yeah, we would have had. No, two actually, more. that 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 was ground only. It wouldn't have mattered. The sea battle was the thing that got. Yeah, but we would have had punked if we had taken the base out in the land battle. Oh no, we couldn't have taken the base out in the land. Yeah, not while right. we have a piece there. Yep, yep, yep. Um. Hmm. I mean, I think that's a move. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, go for it. Okay, let's do Boyosha. It's a military. 
there's nothing there anymore. So <laughs> nothing happens. I guess we could march in, but I don't yep. want to march in. So. Was that yours, Drew? Or Yeah, it was mine. Yep. You have to spend at least one Stratego on him. Oh, shit, really? Yep. Every even military though, requires a one because it's a, Even though it's a friendly... Oh, yep. yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Every, yep. every, one, every military costs it's, one Stratego. Yeah, the only time it's free yep. is if it was a military... Yep. A city-state space. Yep. Bummer. Mm. yep. Even then, it, it always costs at least one to the commanding general. Even even to just pass. All other issues, you can just not do anything if you don't want to. And it costs well, but if I was, I was thinking we could just do the build option because that is technically yeah. free. Um, no, but it, we can't because yeah, it's city-state yeah. space. And we can move that Mace, Macedonian Spartan down. <laughs> yeah. That's actually yeah, true. Could, that is yeah, a good point. Let's him. do that. Yep. Since there are stuff yeah. stacked in here. Oh, uh, no. So it's my turn then. Oh, and you know what? Why don't we just plop him in here because it's free? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Um, okay. Okay. The one you just flipped over there is not the one I thought that was there. So, uh, If only you had a pen and paper. Oh, shoot. Wait. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Okay, so flipping Sparta. More rumors. Rumors of mango spreading like wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Badger. Badger. Which one, Garrick? Uh, I don't rightly remember what's here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember what's here. Do you remember what's there? Yeah, I'll just do that. Okay. It's the Oracle. Um, well, things have certainly changed since I placed that. <laughs> Well, that was years you could, ago. You could kill a navy and take one honor, or or you could take three honor. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm certainly tempted to take the honor, particularly because they're gaining on us. But if right. if there's a particularly <laughs> juicy spot to remove one of their pieces. Well, I was just... Um, well, the only thing I was thinking, it's not the spot so much as just killing a Navy, because as long as we kill their navies, um, they have a hard time They have a hard time killing any bases, and maybe that doesn't matter anymore. Um, I mean, it matters. We're tight on honor. Yeah. Hi, Marliv. If you if you could just if you could dump the entire three treachery into one spot, that would almost be the thing to do. But you can't do that. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a horse. It's a kind of a horse apiece, I guess. I don't care if you take the three honor. I'm not. I'm not catching you. So it's just a matter of. Uh, I mean, I at the moment I'm concerned for our city state at all. So like. Right. I'm willing to take the honor and remove a unit if you think it'll help launch us into victory this this round. Um, My question is: Is well, does removing one if, here if, actually make? I think it's probably identical in terms of math because 
you taking the three honor gives your city state three honor, which is probably about the same yep. as only taking one and then ending. The up only thing is, is if like we lose does, this, I'm not sure if it makes we a lose this, that's a hostage situation, and the controlling faction gets five honor for taking the hostages. So we don't want them taking hostages. That sounds like a good reason to remove a boat then. Yep, that's. All right, and then we get one honor. OK, that's the Oracle. And then Garrick flips this guy. Yep, like that's your only choice. That's my only choice. Uh, oh, it's a military. <laughs> I forgot we <laughs> put one in there. <laughs> well. I, that was not where I thought it was. Well, uh, Garrick I mean, you ship is down. a commanding and commander. It's a great time for a cruise in Boatia, in the Boatian Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> well. And having to spend one on military that you don't actually want to do really sucks. <laughs> So there will be yeah, a battle Because if you here. have zero, you have to fight then, potentially yep. losing. There yep. will be a battle here, and it'll probably just be one Stratego and a card flip against this because there's no sense moving anything in there. Well, um, it's Garrick, well, so he can put it No, before. wait, can't you just spend one to cancel? You could just spend Oh, one but it, it still resolves the issue. Yes. So is there always a battle, basically? Or no, no, you can spend one to cancel. And then, um, and just what is, not what does the resolve the issue mean though? Oh, it's, that just means it's done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The only other thing would be as if it makes sense to move anything anywhere, but we can't move any navies into Thessaly because we already have the door held open. So they can't legally stop there. Can't legally stop up north. Um, we count bases for the holding the door open. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Really interesting. Um, so you actually should not have removed that boat. Yeah. Because yeah. you could have brought in an Athenian Navy. An Athenian Navy. I oh. didn't remember this was interesting military either. Yeah. Yeah. But like, if you had remembered, that would have been yes. slightly more optimal. Yes. That's really could've. fascinating. Huh. Yeah. Should I just pay one to cancel it then? I think so, because we can't get anything where we want it to be, right? Nothing. We can't move anything anywhere that helps. Nothing's popping out at me. I mean, the obvious places would be here and here, and in both cases, we hold the door. So... And there is no sense moving any dead bodies into. Do we do we want to move land units into Thessalia? No, because if this is a military. Yeah, first thing will be a land battle and it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, you could. Well, the milk, what's the best they can do? They can do. Yeah, they can still do too much. They could get two Spartans in there. Yeah. Plus the 300. Yeah, that's too yeah. much. All right, I'll spend one to cancel it, I guess. I'm not seeing any value in resolving it. Okay. Okay. So I am next. Yeah. So I will flip this thing. Oh, come on. In Boyosha. It's a league. We're going to build two boats. And then on to Mango. OK, we're going to flip to Celia. Yep. It's military. I'll let you guess yep. how many and... I will be. And. We'll uh, put our little secret things in our thing and then select a number. 
as will you guys. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready as well. I think we Second are. Here. I mean, yeah, you get, you, we all know how many we have. Okay. Okay. Okay, we are spending two. We're going to move both boats and the 300 for free. What do you guys got? Four. Yep. All right. All the marbles are here. Yep. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus your one, eight. two, three. Yeah, it's seven. tied. We technically have to do a land battle first, but oh, this is really. the card. Mm. Okay. So we just burn a card for the Yay, land battle. Hey, we burned a one. Yep. <laughs> Hey, we burned a one. Oh, it's so did they. All right. Okay. So Mayo battle. So yeah, you you guys. It's eight to seven. Yep. All right. Ready. Draw. Oh fuck! It's a one. We got a one. And we got so, a three. Nothing. What do you mean? We got a three. Oh, wow, I can't read. It's there you great. go. Okay, so we do at least blow up the ship. We do three hits. No, we do four hits. Don't the bases need two to destroy? Yeah. All right, so you guys have one, two, three, four, five navies and three strategos, right? So that's yep. eight. And we have four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, that's right. The ship counts for two as well. So, yeah, we're, we're only doing two anyway. Okay, so we do get to destroy a ship, though. Yes. And that's a hostage. So since that, that you took it, you get five for that. Well, yeah. okay, wait. So destroying a ship, is that separate from hot? So do I get, yes. do we get honor for killing a unit and also yes. hostage honor? Okay, yep. well, that probably swung the game then. Yep. So yeah, I get two for the boat and then an additional five. And so we get eight uh, total. So yeah, eight total. loses two. Yeah, I don't see any way we come back from that. All right, who's resolving next? Uh, well, that was Mango's resolve, so bad. Badger. Rumors. Drew. Rumor. Uh, Garrett. Oh yeah, you can't do anything. So. <laughs> I don't know, Mako. What do we do? <laughs> I don't know. This first, probably, I guess. Let's yeah, just keep going down this stack. It's a military. <laughs> Can't do anything. I have no strategy to lose. So is that just that's yep, it? Yep, it's done? just null, null and void. It's a land battle against no one. <laughs> All right, and then I don't remember what this is, but why don't we do it and force yeah, them to we'll do, do the this bottom one. thing? Rumors. All right, Badger. Rumors. <laughs> also, our rumors. Hey. Okay, so now it's back up here. So let's see what that's happens. True. Oh, that's my oracle. Oh, it's your oracle. Three. Yeah, you should take three because that gives the city state three. Yeah. Unless there's something to remove. Yeah, that's definitely worth yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, I'm just taking yeah. the three. Badger. There's the military I knew we I had. How military did you guys get? Do you only get two? We had three or three. four? They had three. They had, I think they had three, if I remember correctly. And we can't do anything with it. We yeah. have no yep. money to spend. So this one, I think, is... Wait, hold rumors. on. Don't you... You still attack, though. We, oh, no, yeah, it's, yeah, there's right. no... Yeah, there's we, no strategos, so... Yeah, we literally can't spend anything. Yeah, they anything. have to pay... They have to pay to at least one to do it. Oh, okay. Yep. So we have a rumors, and then what's your last thing? Rumors. Also rumors. Yep. Okay. A lot of nothing up north. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Well, that that military was supposed to be a raid, oh. I think. But yeah, you see how that turned out. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, we had all kinds of raids planned too. But then yeah, we we had so many raids planned. We were gonna raid the crap out of everything, and then we were like, oh, we this have to spend all this defending have, Corinth. This league issue might have saved you. Yeah. Um. Well, because no, because it, it only put it, the two down, and we could have just parked one more Spartan there. Yeah, because we actually had leftover for that first one. We had leftover stuff for that battle. Yeah. Like, we would have left Sparta empty, but that turned out to not matter because the shit we were worried about here was just a rumor for you guys. I think we... But, like, we could have even I was, Sparta. I was there. begging to put a real military there. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think we probably needed to sweep this base. Yeah. And or yep. we needed to be better up well, here. If we, had, if we had won this no, naval battle, be that best. would have with the with if we win that naval battle yeah killing that one yes. ship is what squeaked us by you i think yeah although was... it would it, we were awful close before you got your oracle yeah that's true the oracle might have tied us actually exactly what what's a tiebreaker uh um, i think we were three behind you before the i oracle think so too because... what are we ahead of you now one two three four five six seven eight nine. yeah i think we were wait nine no, I think we uh, had. I don't either. remember. I think I think you might have been three ahead. We'll see, or someone can look back. But what <laughs> what is the tiebreaker? Uh, I think it's just the faction that has the most, if I remember correctly, and then if it's still tied, I think it's the Athenian controlling faction. Okay. Athens is Athens is the Athens is the final default winner. Okay. Yeah, um, that makes sense. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's if it's tied, then it's the highest. Then it's the faction with the most on it. Okay. And if that's yep. still tied, um, if that's still tied, it defaults to demagogue. It defaults to the Athenian, I think. Whoever's controlling. Whichever. I mean. Yeah. Oh, close finish. Sorry about the sudden ending there. My computer decided to crash on me right as we were finishing up. Uh, Sparta obviously took it away with a wonderful final round. And that was Pericles. We will probably play again at some point. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great one.